Welcome to Wally Bra. And in case you know you don't know what we're up to, we're making a letterbox kind of gargoyle thing, yeah. To fend off the evil spirits, aka Bills. So yes, we've got this far, we've got the head on, we've got some shoulders on, we've got some legs on. I made a tail. And also, it's got a spine with some ribs going across the top. Now, this isn't fully exposed, you can't see the whole thing. Really, you can only just see like that from the front, from where it's going to be mounted in our fence. But today, I want to try and get some wings on. They'll be bigger than that, I think, looking at it. <laughs> um, get some wings on, but first of all, I want to do that. Hello, Lee, buddy, how you doing, matey? And um, so we glued that up well, on Sunday, on Sunday, it's quite a long stream on Sunday for some reason. But yeah, they glued it up on Sunday. Um, and so there we've got like, it's like this twisted, yeah, tail. And that is going to be mounted uh, there, on the back of the actual, yeah, gargoyle's spine. So visually, from the front, when you look at as they will be looking at it, it'll be something like that. And then they'll have a couple of wings there as well. But all this lot is kind of hit, it's kind of obscured by the wooden fence. So it's wood, well, wooden posts and, and netting. Yeah, like sheep fencing. So first of all, I want to be, you know, making that little bit more friendly looking, friendly looking, um, more tail looking, I would say. That's what I should be saying, more tail looking. So that's going to be plonked on the back there. So that's my first goal of the day, of the day, or the evening, because this was supposed to be all finished last Sunday, but no, no, that never pans out like that. Everything that takes longer than you first envisage, as it does. So how are we going to shape it? There's various ways we can do it. One is with that, and get a bit aggressive with it, get the worst of it off, which I had a bit of a play with it. It's, it's pretty aggressive, mind. And then we just go down in the stages. If I could find them, I would use my carving knives, and you just little whittle it bit by bit by bit by bit. And it actually gives you a nice texture then as well, which is quite quite good. There is a bit of a gap in the joint there. It doesn't matter, there's a big dowel going down the middle, which you saw on Sunday. But we'll fill that, we'll just fill it. Um, but yeah, the front of it is pretty good though, to be honest. Um, it's not too bad at all. It's the front, yeah, that's the front. Hope everybody can hear me okay. Yay, you got notification, sound is good. Oh, I'd like to hear that. Oh. <laughs> I did the video um, on the hello buddy, hello Kit Kat, hello Glasgow Kiss, hello Winston and Lee. Yeah, um, quite far. I put a video up about, and I mentioned there about Labour sounding like they're inside a, a drum. Uh, hello, hello Jasper, and then I didn't realise that um, my sound also sounded like I was inside a drum as well. <laughs> Maybe that's the point. Yes, irony, irony. That's what it is. Yeah, well, the fact that I was actually. I did, I did the actual audio in a very tall room. I think I might have some to do with it. I have done sound ending in there, but it's not enough. But anyway, I digress. So, the other thing you can use is a chisel. And you peel it, about, peel it with a chisel. As long as you find one that's big enough and sharp enough. And if it isn't sharp enough, you make it sharp enough. Uh, I think this is quite a good chisel for that job. So... I've got a little technique I do my, when I'm sharpening my chisels. I've got a few ways I do it, actually. One is I'll use a linen shirt if I want to do my grinding. I don't use a grinder on my chisels. I use a linen shirt. It's like a big belt sander. Um, and I find that well, because it's flat, I get a better job. Whereas um, when you use anything with a round wheel, obviously the wheel's round in it. So you've got to create a concave in your grind. I don't like that. It's not what I want. So this is a very old Robert Sorby chisel. I've had this a very long time and it needs a bit of refurb again because the ferrule, which is brass, is split. And what causes that is damp. So if you've got wooden chisels like this, wooden handles on, this has got an oak handle um, on there. That's, that's not the original handle. It's swelled up. And there's a lot of force in it, obviously. What that's done is split the ferrule with a little brass ferrule. Oop, there you go. As you can see on there. So that's, that's the reason for that. But it's still a really good chisel. It doesn't seem to affect it too much. And I don't give it much welly. I would put the little ring on the back there, I didn't have any brass, so I couldn't do it. So it had to be um, a bit of cobble, a bit of cobble pipe. And that stops the end from splitting when you tap it with your mallet. But we're not going to be using the mallet, it's all going to be handwork. So I'll give it a go with this first, if not, I'm going to tack it with the sander. But um, I can't find my... I've got a box full of um, 
carving chisel, hand, they're like little short chisels, like think of just like, like little knives, like pen knives almost, but the blade's just perfectly shaped for the job, and little flexi cut ones, and they're, they're quite expensive things, but I can't find it, don't know why. <laughs> Say to me, that's life, eh? Oh, we've got 13 people there already. Oh, wow, brilliant. Pretty cool. Right, okay, so let's get this sharp. It's not really sharp enough at the moment. If I say it's sharp, I'd be able to shave the back of my hand, and it doesn't want to know. No, no, a little bit. More like scrape the hair off the back of the hand. But no, that's, for me, that's not sharp enough to do what I want to do with it. So, the other option would be using that, or... I would use a chisel like this one. This is a this is a carving chisel, but not the kind I'm, I was talking about before. It's not a for whittling, obviously. It's just a gouge for carving. So you use that with a mallet. Like so, um, would it work on something like that? I suppose it might do. We might give that a go as well. But first of all, I want to get rid of some of the flat surfaces. So we're going to use that, and also got to be really, really careful with that because that's a risk of breaking. You know, if I give it too much welly, too much force, you've got to whack it with a hammer because that tail, I don't want to break this tail, do I? have to have it amputated, wouldn't he? Do I want to do that? No. I've got one of them weird dogs with a tail with no tail. I don't like seeing dogs with no tails. Looks a bit strange. I also don't like seeing dogs with no balls either. <laughs> don't seem to be a real dog without a ball or two. <laughs> anyway. This is a, when you um, sharpen by hand. Some people it's think about having it as high as putting, you know, and working like that, or put on top of your bench or something like that and working, yeah. But the best place actually is low down. And when I say low down in this case, I have two stones in that drawer. So I can put lids on and just tuck it out of the way. It's not getting covered in muck all the time. Well, not quite as much muck anyway. So then I use. I'll make sure before I start, sorry. These oil stones, they're carborundum, silicon carbide, sorry, oil stones. And these, both of these are Norton's, Norton India stone. They're very, very um, popular. In the United Kingdom, these actually are really quite reasonably priced. You know, they're not very expensive as well. Be careful of a lot of um, stones that you might see. Like, for instance, when you buy a set of chisels and you might get a stone like that one. Well, that came with a draper set of chisels. And the stone's too soft. Too soft. The problem with a soft stone that's too soft, eventually it ends up a funny shape. I've probably got oh, one that I can show you that's a funny shape. Mm, uh, I do have quite a few sharpenings. Oh, oh my god, what's going on there? See? This one here, nope, that's pretty flat. <laughs> that, that one. So I don't know where it is. Oh, got another one there. So I do collect them as you see. So this is another Norton India stone. And this one is, it's 198. Now these are quite reasonably priced in the UK and they're quite reasonably priced, in, obviously in the United States. I say obviously, it's just, you know, that's where, where they're from. But in, in, in Europe, they're really expensive. <laughs> if I want to buy one of these in France, I know that's 60, 70 quid for an oil stone. It's ridiculous. You can get one for like yeah, under 20 or around 20 um, pounds in the UK. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to first start with the coarser stone, which is that one, and that's my fine. Now this stone, I bought this when I was working for Lacey Electrical, actually. I don't know why Lacey Electrical, because I'm doing electrical, but that's why I bought when I was working for Lacey Electrical, because I was doing woodwork as well at the same time. Um, so I want a bit of oil, which is all leaked out over here, because I've got knocked over. That's right, it's got someone in there. So this is actually just engine oil and a bit of white spirit mixed together. That's all I, that's all I use. And what that does is it, it lubricates the actual tool, helps prevent the tool from getting rusty. That's one of the reasons I don't like using water, because some people use water or um, Windex, you know, Windeline for sharpening the chisels on a diamond stone. You wouldn't do that on stones like this. These have to be done with a thin oil, like three in one type oil. But I just speak to me, I always use a bit of engine oil. It's only a lubricant for the, your blade to swipe back and forth, isn't it? Now, if you're not confident, you can use a little gadget like this one to get your angle. Now, generally speaking, you do something a chisel like this, your primary grind would be about 30 degrees, and then you go down to about 28 degrees, and that's kind of like the average. So if you use a tool like this, it's quite handy, because what you can do is you can set that on there like so, to the, to the angle you want it to go, and you tie it up, and I tend to use a big screwdriver, because that always comes loose, 
you can get better ones than this. This is just that's actually one that came in a in a set. And to be fair, it's been all right actually. It's not too bad. Actually, I think it's that same Draper set I was talking about a minute ago regarding the um the thing. But I've never used it before. But if you're not, you know, if, if you think you're going to struggle, use one of these. But make sure it's tight when you put, when you put it together, because otherwise that'll just constantly be falling out on you. There's a little groove in there on either, on either side for the for your blade or your your tool to sit into. Until I don't really use it because all the, everything's like gummed up. But I've been doing, I've, yeah, I've been doing this sort of thing for a very long time, so I can actually, I do it all by eye generally, yeah, by feel. So you cut the swipes first and have a look to see what's going on. See where you're making contact. At the moment, you're making contact there, but not there. Now, I want it to be a bit steeper than that because I got that bit. There's no point in me polishing that one up. That that main face off the big face with the main grind. The primary grind, there's no point doing that. I want to put an edge on it. So I need that I need to do the 28 de degree. So I'm gonna bring it back a little bit until I'm happy. Hence that here. It's on the stone. Now the reason why I say I like the stones low is because you can do like a rock that's almost like a rocking from your shoulders like that. Yeah, and, and you can keep a better angle. So first of all, that's not tight enough yet. So let's try again. So, yeah, once you get the hang of it, you won't, you know, you won't have all this faff. Then you just basically bring it back to forwards like so. It just keeps it at the right angle. So it's just a sharpening guide. You can make your own up have a bit of wood. In fact, I might have one in I can show you. I've made out a bit of wood. Mm. Nope. Where's that gone? I don't know what it is. I keep, I'm losing everything these days. Lose my mind as well, probably. I'm sure somebody can confirm that. <laughs> so you better bring it back to forwards like so. And that's if you're going to use a gauge like so. And I'm looking at it now, and I'm actually on the edge. Just, just on the edge. So that's good. Every so often you'll need to recheck your grind and effectively start again. <laughs> so, um, but you, to do this, fat, that main grind, I use, I use a um, belt sander. Uh, which is the linen bait, that big a big machine I've got through there, which has got a four uh six inch wide belt. And it's about that long. And I'll use that shh, a couple of passes on that and it's done and job's done. And it's flat. And then obviously I'll do my sharpening. So you can use tool like the you know stones like these if you like. Let's say this is the coarser, that's the fine on one. But other ways is wet stones you can use. I don't recommend a wet stone like a like a proper wet stone because they're so soft. Unless you really know what you're doing with them, you're going to end up. Well, there's a process with them where, as you sharpen, you have to like have some, like a, another stone which is perfectly flat. So you're constantly flattening off your whetstone as you're using it. So it's um, it's a hell of a faff. But can you get a good sharp edge? Oh my God, can't you just? It's amazing, absolutely amazing. But for most people, it's not necessary. Just yeah, you know, a couple of these will do. Or if you want um. Get yourself a cheap set of diamond sharpeners. They do some on Amazon. A set of three. I think they're just tool bank or something like that. Just cheap Chinese ones. <laughs> Actually, really good. I've got, that's what I've got in, in this in, in up the top here. It's these ones. I've got a set of three of those, and I actually use them. They're quite thick as well. Um, I use them a lot. I also use them for sharpening my router bits. Um, so yeah, they they definitely do the job. And they're cheap. So once I've gone to that one, I don't worry about the back at this stage. I'll then go on to my finer stone. But grit-wise, your coarse stone needs to be around three to four hundred grit, and then anything above a thousand grit for your fine. It also depends on what type of work you're doing. If you know how sharp you need it to be. That's the only thing when you're using these because you roll off the back end. You're in, there's nothing there. You could do another piece of wood there, really, for to rest on to get the full width of the stone. Otherwise, the stone will end up being ground into a bit of a curve. Let's carry on. It's getting there. I'm going to take it out of that now. I actually don't like to use it. I usually do it all by hand, just by eye and feel. I just want to show it, that's all. So now I'm going to have a bit of a burr. There's a bit of a burr on the back edge. So you have to get rid of that. There's various ways of doing it. One is literally just going 
lowering the chisel onto your flat stone like this one here, the fine stone, do a few passes back and forwards, and that'll take your burr, and then you a few passes like so, do the same again, and the burr will eventually break off. But how I tend, tend to do it, which is show up first, right? Can you, yeah, yeah. All you do, if you watch me Ginger Island, you probably know what I'm about to do. No, <gasps> no, he's gonna cut himself. No, it's literally palm of the hand, that part at the ball of the thumb. Down, up, down, up, out. What I'm doing is I'm folding. <laughs> I'm folding that burr backwards and forwards. And it breaks off. I can feel it sharp now. Yeah, it's getting there. Oh. <laughs> so, um, hopefully now. Yep. Ugh, it's hair. Oh, see? That's a chisel. Yeah, can you see my hair? Can you focus on my hair? Do you really want to focus on my hair? That's, a, that's the other question. No, you can see my hair there. Oh, there it is, look, see? So it's, it's sharp. <laughs> I think it's a fairly good indication. I'm not saying I'm going to sh shave with it, because I don't think it's really good enough for that. Not yet, but it could be. I do actually have a cut throat razor. I used to shave one then. And quite frankly, this takes way too blooming long. Not to shave so much. Pet preparation. So, okay, so, so before I carry on, see, what see if anyone say anything. Hello, Donk. Oh, Donf. Sorry, Donf Zik. Merci beaucoup. And to you, P does. Joy Nouvelle and a Happy New Year to all. Happy New Year to all. Good health to everybody. It's a bit late. No, not at all. Smash the like button. Oh, please. Smash the like button. Boop it. Boop the like button. <laughs> oh, dear. You had a cat with no tail. What do you do to that poor thing? Huh? Was it deliberate? Or just an accident? <laughs> Hello, everyone. I was just catching up on the videos for today. When I saw this, a wee bit late. <laughs> no worries. I kind of like uh, like half hour. Before, I'm gonna I'm gonna go online. I'm gonna do it now. So then obviously I thought put both on a quick sec. Yeah, little bit of a warning, but not much at all. Ready? Hello, Timothy. Hello, Mad Monk. D -d -d -d. Yeah, anyway, let's carry on. Let's see if this chisel is gonna do its job. Oh, how do you get all your kit to France? Oh my God, was that a story? Well, I used to have a transit van, which we kitted out as a camper. Long wheelbase, high top, three and a half ton. Quite a chunky old thing that was. Yeah. And a three and a half ton trailer. And we did three loads with that. I bought, obviously bought a fair bit of stuff here. And we had a, um, a large box van as well come over, which we paid somebody to bring loads of stuff over, such as the mowers and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, big old ride on mowers and whatever. And um, I went with a motorbike and various other stuff. Anyway, he brought loads and loads of stuff, a bed and all that. All the stuff that we thought might be vulnerable in a trailer in the back of the van. Anyway, so um, he came over and we, me and Dizzy, met him here with his, you know, with his buddy, and that, and uh, and we had our load. So it was quite a bit of stuff. Um, but crikey, us three loads of me with the trailer, and it was I was overloaded every time. I could have done with doing two more loads really and splitting that down. There's a lot of stuff we brought over, and a lot of stuff. We never flip and used. You think, so why on earth do you go to all that trouble organising this to get this stuff over to France? You might have just got rid of it. Because you got rid of it anyway, now a lot of it. It's just kind of, what was the point? And we sold a lot of stuff before we came over anyway, because I'm a bit of a hoarder with stuff, tools and stuff like that. Um, but it's just, I brought a load of crap over, to be honest. And it obviously cost money to do so. And the time. Anyway, the last time we came over, not last time, the second to last time we came over with my younger son, in the in, in the camper with me, and I say camper, it's just a van really, in the van with the train on the back, all loaded up. And when we got to the customs check out, you don't realise that when you're driving at first, you realise how heavy you really are. Anyway, I was looking up there to the guy in his little box at the customs, you know, at Dover, and he says to me, he took the head out the window. He says, oh, foot, no, he, first he looked out the window and said, "Are you heavy?" Then he chucked his head out the window. He goes, "You're very heavy." 
just don't get stopped by the gendarmes, they'll have you. And that's what, that was his advice, and that was at um, the Port of Dover. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was talking at Dover, was that the Cali when we got over? I can't remember, I was up in Port of Dover, as mentioned. A long while ago now. Yeah, this will work. Let's do it with a chisel. German Shepherd looks like a fan. Looks like fancy to. Oh, I see. It. <laughs> oh, I see. Did the dog eat it? Mmm, yummy. All right. So I'm gonna use a chisel to start with. Just take some of this off, just to, to show it is possible. So we're gonna literally peel. You know, some of the wood off to get this, get some shape. I'm not too fast, obviously. You know, I'm I'm sure no one's going to um be. You know, the tail police, I'm sure they're not going to be there, are they, to say, that doesn't look like a tail, what are you on about? I'm going to say, well, that's probably good enough, that's what I'll say. It's going to be stuck out in the elements. Give it a little bit, it'll be probably swelled up anyway. Be a swollen tail. A few years later, some idiot will knock it off anyway. Or I'll get a bus driver again and back into my driver and, and bust my gate and his tail. That's why we've got an electric... I don't know what I told you, lost last time, I think. That's why we've got an electric fence. They paid for it. <laughs> electric gate, I mean. They paid for it, so... See so how sharp it is, you know. Just pay it off. You know, so it's one way of doing it. Another way would be to use... Um, you could use a drill with a little drum sander in it. Which is like a little rubber roller with a... Um, a cylinder... I think I've got one there, I'll show you. Look at the cylinder. I can't even say it. Now. Why can't I say it? Something's German. That draws German up. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. <clears throat> Set here. So in here we've got a little drum sanders to go to drill. She's let to drill, but you run use these. So it's like a little rubber thing with a little oh, one of these slid over the top. So that would work. Get into all these little nooks and crannies. You might, you might even be doing that in a minute. But the best tool will be the ones I can't find. I don't know why. So the problem with what we're doing here is because the grain's gone one way and going the other way, you can quite easily cause, um, you know, where it gets caught and you sort of lift the grain, which I don't want to do. If I go this way, like so, and then that way, like so. That's my plan, anyway. I'm not going to go mad with it anyway. Another way we, we, we could do, if it was... um. I want to replicate scales or something, I'd use something like this. And then I just literally got that to create a bit of interest. Doesn't work that well on pine mine, but on oak. Or even chestnuts even better. So you can create a bit of a an effect if you know what I mean. But we're not doing that today. Because <laughs> it's for the letterbox. <laughs> I wonder if Graham Hughes, when I left him with my chisel <laughs> and my sharpness, actually used them. <laughs> well, here he gave the chisel to Ishmael. That'd be, that'd be that good now. That'd be no good whatsoever. Ishmael didn't sharpen anything. Lovely guy, but he didn't sharpen anything. I never understood. I never understand that. Like, why you wouldn't sharpen something? Because it's blood up, wasn't it? Well, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It doesn't take long to sharpen something. <laughs> oh my god! When I went into like the builder's merchant, and I asked him about a sharpening stone, because they had, they, you know, because we've got that, um, got a hand plane, and uh, when, yeah, I said we've got a sharpening stone. He says, no, we don't, we don't use sharpened stones here. We just use an angle grinder with, yeah, like, you know, one of them to sharpen everything. How's that ever going to be sharp? It's not.
And that was the advice I got from, you know, an actual proper bit, like a, like a Juicens type place. They sold everything in there, to be fair to them. But I thought, crikey, what are you, what are you on? Now, I took note of what um, was said on Sunday regarding some simple projects, you know, some... Um, well, I'm not heavy breathing down the microphone. Uh, you know, projects that anyone can do. You know, you've, you've, got, you've got a few little tools. I'll give this I've been giving it some thought. There's quite, there's quite a bit, actually. Quite a bit we can do. And also techniques that you could, you know, I could teach. Which would be pretty cool. Simple techniques, you know, stuff. And also tools that you can make. There's lots of things you can make. My um, great grandfather used to make all his t tools on his um, garden fire. Temple steel. Quite, used to, quite often use old um, leaf springs. You know, car leaf springs. Or van leaf springs, or any leaf spring. Yeah, a curvy bit of steel. He used to use that. And temper it and grind it into shape and forge it and whatever. And, Make it into chisels or plain irons for his moulding planes. He was a hell of a craftsman, I tell you. Amazing. A lot of those skills are lost now, aren't they? I think we sort of mentioned that last time, didn't we, regarding um, Notre, Notre Dame. It's not going to be easy to find all the people you need to do that kind of work. Pretty sharp this chisel, but it's not as sharp as it could be. It's a really lovely bit of steel, actually. This chisel, it's a, it's a Robert Sorby chisel. I've had it a very long time, but I can't remember where I got it from. I can't remember if I bought it. You know, as a new chisel, which is very much, un very unlikely. But I did have a habit of buying lots of things on that. That is where I got it from eBay. I remember now. I buy a lot of used to or used to, not so much now because people have cottoned on to it now, and uh, they're not cheap anymore. Right, so I am going to do it now. I'm going to start you. Have a go with them, shall we? Because then we can get into all these little nooks and crannies and stuff and try and shape it up a bit. Oh, but I'm going to need a drill. And where is it? That is a valid po point. Where is the drill? I thought you were a battery drill, you an electric drill. Yeah, you know, something with a bit of welly in it. Arr, there you are, Jim and Ad. Right, shiver my timbers. Right, so. I cleaned the fire out, and it's actually working now. I was struggling on the weekend to get my fire harness because I hadn't cleaned the bottom out. <laughs> Wasn't getting any oxygen. And this time I just chucked a bag of um, sawdust on it, and now it's uh, it's a good one. Working like a good one it is. So there's one Bosch drill. Now this Bosch drill here, <laughs> we pulled it out of a skip. <laughs> The Bosch Professional Drill, right? Pulled out of a skip in England. And uh, it didn't work. All that Lincoln needed was a lead. And considering it was coming over to France anyway, what do I do? I'll put a French plug on it. So it's just silly. What? Why? No, it wasn't the lead. I'll tell a lie. No, it was a chuck. That's why it's got a, that had an uh, ordinary key truck chuck on there. Half inch key truck. I didn't need a half inch anyway, I've just got um, 10 mil on it now, but I've got a, a Rome keyless on there. Because I already had it, and it fitted, so I put it on there. Obviously I could do a bigger one, but it doesn't really matter for that drill, because I don't use anything like that. Right, so, any medium mining, what is a good size to use? Probably that one. If you look at that and you think, hmm, that fit in there nicely. Keeping a smaller one there. But let's start with this one. Provided I've got the roller there that actually fits, which is this one. So I have got the roller there. Aha! Uh -huh. I love it when a plan comes together. Do, 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 do. Who loves films? I love films and TV programmes and stuff, mainly films. I don't watch a lot of series, I watch a lot of films. I can never remember their names, but I like them anyway. <laughs> That's at Star Wars, of course. So you remember them. Uh, dee, 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 dee. Do 
loosen it up. All that does is it relaxes the um, the rubber. At the moment, am I going tight or loose? I've not gone tight actually. Is that reverse? Yes. Oh, the thread's in reverse. <laughs> That's me think I'm trying to loosen it, but the thread's actually backwards. There you go. Now, oh, yesterday, I had a mad moment in here. I thought, oh, because I, I bought two microphones. I bought a brand new one, and then an older version of that same microphone ended up on eBay in France for about 20 quid, or well, 20 quid plus postage. So I bought it. And it had no stand or anything with it. And because the microphone's actually quite um, big, it's quite a fat microphone, like me, um, a lot of things don't, won't go around it. So you have to use the, which in fact, this is what generally what you'd have to use, is just like a clamp that goes underneath the microphone. That thing. And um, that's all very well. That's not what I want, no. So what I did was, I thought, well, how am I going to do with this? I, I, I want it on the, uh, for my live streams upstairs, which I didn't do today. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my head around what we're doing on the live streams um, for the other channel, because it's a bit um, hard to not do for the best at the moment. I was going to do one let one o'clock every day, plus maybe two more. But I, looked, I was going through the analytics earlier today, and it was just really suffering. I thought, oh, I'd be better off making videos. Hence, two videos went on today. On the other channel is. God, I wish that slide off there. Don't want to come off. It will. I'll make it. I don't want to use that because it's not on properly. Right, anyway, I'll tell you what. So anyway, I was there. I was making a. I was going to put. I was going to make a very simple stand for just to sit into. Um, on the on, you know, on the lathe. So I started to hurt a bit of wood. I had a big old. I had that, thinking that was going to be big enough to put the microphone into. Yeah, it's quite a size, you know. By the time I got rid of all the rubbish wood around it, I ended up with <laughs> with that. <laughs> yeah, a fat rolling bin. And it was only what, yeah, a little tiny bit of meat for me to sit the microphone into. That wouldn't have worked, that just fell to pieces. So I decided against that. So I grabbed a bit of old beam that used to be in the kitchen where, the, where I cut the... Um, Joyce out to put the staircase in, and I'll use that. Use a bit of that because I was only, you know, about that long. You know, there's a part of another bit that, you know, um, so it's only quite short. So, what I did, I bored a hole down the middle of it so it could accept the microphone. It looks really good. You'll see one day, maybe. So, it's, um, yeah, I was very pleased with it. So, I lacked it all up, lacked it all up as well, and waxed it all. And while I was doing it, I was making a video, so I'll be making a video of that, so that'll be going on this channel, obviously. It's a bit of a random one, I suppose. I'm very interested in doing some simple projects. I just, um, because of what Su uh, Susan DeWitt was saying about, uh, aut um, autistic, autistic, autistic daughter. She's 18. But yeah, I, 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 yeah, I can really uh, relate to that. Not, not, I'm not autistic, but I can relate to the, how good woodworking in general would be for, you know, for somebody who suffers a bit of autism. So I will be doing a, very, a variety of different projects. I quite liked uh, Jasper's idea regarding um, manuette, marionettes, you know, pap puppets. I thought that's quite cool. <laughs> what did <this> come off? <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Yeah, it's like when you put boots on, you can't get your boots off. You know, your wellies. They're sort of sticking to your legs. Why on earth? It's coming, but very slowly. Crikey. I want your rubber. I think what happened, what's happened is because it's been left with that under tension so long, the rubber's literally got memory and it's stayed put but the wind's changed we will we will we will we will succeed I don't know what to do with the bigger one I'll just put a turn on what was that like that's too mm, mm, I don't know actually first no that, mm, that's a bit big and we are getting there it's, it's very slow 
Lord, this is so annoying when this happens. Oh, that's coming. That's the way to do it. That's a blowing. There she blows. Oh, it's like popping the zit. Oh, God. A huge amount of relief when I get to the end. Oh, well, there you go. Blimey. Oh, but there's nothing septic on that. So, anyway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, we could put a new one on there. That is a bit on the tight side now. What's happened is, because this has been squashed down for too long, that's been expanded for too long, it hasn't had been allowed to shrink back. So, hopefully the new one will slide on. Yeah, it's getting on, it's just, oh, it's blooming hell. Just, uh, things, if it bends before it goes on, you won't get on. I almost feel I'll like put this in the drill and sand it down a bit. The actual rubber, because that is way too tight. The only thing is, if it's relaxed, will it eventually go back anyway? And then you make it too small. If you're not, you know what I mean, if you're not careful. God, the things we do. Huh? <laughs> Let's get in there. Put it on there like that, then start whacking it and go up. Hmm. That might ha need a little bit of tape. No, I don't want really want to, but I might have to. What I'll do is I'll put that rubber, just tie it up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it in the drill. Just run it literally over a bit of sandpaper just to reduce the size of it a little bit. I need a bit of sandpaper. Where are you? That will do. That will do. The bit I found earlier. Hmm. Needs to stay put as well. See, it's gonna slide on there. I think it's warm there, it's just probably swelled a bit. A little bit more. job. Look, aha! Feels a bit more hopeful. I hope. I hope it's more hopeful. It's got to be smaller. The rubber came off. It sounds like in the window, doesn't it? It's not intentional. I do apologise. Oh, oh, needs more off. Poor Bennett. That is tight. All right, let's try again. So careful, don't take too much off. I 
should cover my little safety specs. Put one there, it's like half the horse's bolt. This is what I give up on it. Oh, I'll use that one instead. Why on earth is that so tight? I don't want to take, over, take too much off, you see, it's a bit steady going in. <laughs> oh dear. Why doesn't it go in? Thing is, you could put some lubricant on or something like that, and it might slide in easily, might not it? <laughs> oh dear. All right. I feel I'm getting closer. Not a lot. Make it any easier. Let's have a look. Big hammer. That's what I want. A big hammer. Still didn't find my uh, oh my four hammer. I don't know how that's gone. Anyway. I'm beginning to one think that's why it wasn't on enough properly in the first place. Right. I don't know if that'll work, but I don't tap it too much. Single work because you're squeezing both parts effectively. That's not too bad, that's nearly all I on. It's got to squeeze the end now, it's all. Ooh, dear. Naughty. Right, anyway, let's stick with that. That'll do now. It might even move as I start using it. It might slide on further. See, they have to be, they have to be fairly tight. If they're not, what happens is they end up slipping about. So it's just, um, yeah, start spinning on the rubber. And we're going to start using it as it is because you can't sit there all day just playing like that. That's just silly. All right. I don't think it's too tight. <laughs> so I'll we'll put this in the vice. Oh, got a tail on my voice. It's caught between its legs. It's tail between its legs. <laughs> right, let's bring it a bit closer. Glasses. Oh, let's bring it down to. Oh, hello. How are you? La 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 la. <laughs> yeah, I did check that um, Kit Kat regarding it you know, before. And it, it actually, the lid would open, but the thing wouldn't slide out because the, the foot was over the 
over the actual box. <laughs> oh, too much patience. Yeah, very much patience. Oh, courage for the work. Glad I'm not the only one who was nervous about it. <laughs> the tongue is not too. I don't know. Go on, Tommy. What have you said? I must have. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Oh, Tommy said, open the mailbox door, Marcus. I'm a wee bit concerned about the tongue clearance. Ooh, so we'll see. He did that, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> it was a concern, but no, it's fine. Yeah, I've lifted up. It's probably because you look at an angle as well, actually, aren't you? So if you look where you're looking from. Yeah, it looks like it's going to block it, but no, it doesn't. No, that's, what, that's, that's actually, that's probably about 20 mil clearance there. So. <laughs> Anyway, let's get jiggy with it. That's definitely the way to do it. I'll tell you what I could do if I'm gonna get myself a carving machine. It's literally like um you feel of a Dremel, one of them little Dremel drills, but the motor's hanging on a little hook and it has an umbilical cord coming down and you've got like a proper chuck on the end. They're, they're, it's a bit it's sort of about some steroids, I mean it's, it's more powerful than the brilliant for carving. And that'd be good for this, especially with one of these on the end. Fall off there, you. You see that? Let's just start, that. You start getting a bit of shape today, that. See? And that's it. Mainly with that, really. That works really well. You can also get it on its bloody thing properly, though. It's kind of bugging me, it is. I feel I failed. Right, so. <laughs> um, so that, I'm quite happy with that. So just I'm going to continue with that around there. I'll be really careful because I don't end up breaking it. I think it's pretty strong, though. It's fairly strong, to be honest. <laughs> Um, my first ever lathe was a Black & Decker drill attachment. Not this kind of attachment, the other kind where you had a pin in the back of the drill. It's an old fashioned type, you know, Black & Decker drill. Got to be careful. Well, that one at least a bit. I won't want to stick to down mind. There's a bit of a crack in here. A natural sort of shrinkage crack. It's there. I'll have to be careful. Um, and it, I, I did make quite a few things on that. And I had a little set of, uh, oh, a little... Oh, little Marley chisel, yeah, Marley lathe chisels. Yeah, about three or four chisels. And I started making my own chisels out of old chisels, grinding them up. I was quite young, I was quite young then. I was still, well, I was still at school, so yeah, I was still at school. That's 12 or 14, I imagine, when I bought that. My dad had a lathe that he used to, he used to use, um, that he bought from a tool shop called Kellen in Norwich, which is now gone, it's been gone for some while actually. They're also a toy shop, a uh, model shop as well. I believe that horse is still there, I think it's in the um, Castle Mall now. Yeah, this is definitely the way to do it. Thank <laughs> you. 
right. That's pretty cool. Why oh, is that drill for sh well, it's, it's on full speed as well? It's a really slow drill. I don't want to do too much hair because I'll show you what I mean. It's got this thing called a shake. It's a natural stress line where um, the timber is, has been drying and on the stress, I don't know if you can see that, I'll put that, you might see a little split in the wood. That's basically a shrinkage. It's what we call, what we call a shake. Yeah, well, it's unevenly shrunk. But I, I believe that's what it is. Def yeah, it is. Uh, so I've got that bit of texture on that side now. I don't go mad, I'm not going to... Look, crikey, look what it is. Um, no fine carpentry here, mate. God, you just have to do fine... Oh, I hate doing fine carpentry. It's too pretentious. Light has gone out again. A bit spooky, man, you know. Oh, come on, you. I'm literally just here. It's just literally there, and it's still going out. Oh, I don't know what I think. You know, what possesses it? Right, um, I think some of now just do, you know, a little gentle hand sanding. I think, you know, I'm not going to go mad with it. A little bit more hair, I think. Here. I've seen me this summer having to get stocked up on a load load of wood, different timbers, a bit of variety. Let's do hardwoods. Now, if you're doing projects, like for instance, but you need some, you know, hardwood, but you if, there's some, if you don't have a sawmill, they often have... I'll take my watch off because I'm going to scratch it. Um, they often have... Yeah, how to explain this? Like for, I'll, I'll grab a log. That's a good way to explain it. I've got a log. Oh, not that log, this log. Right, so we've got a log. When they cut a log like this, I say if it's going to cut it into posts, for instance, square posts. Don't make a cut, 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 make it square. That's waste, that's waste, that's waste. But when, you do, when you're dealing with whopping great, huge logs, some of those bits they're cutting off are like two, three inches thick. Got a curve in them, but you get material like that. I know it's now around the outside, near the outside of the tree, so the rings aren't great. But for some jobs, it's absolutely fine. Especially garden projects. And I can get that. They call it a fago here. <laughs> fago. <laughs> There's actually a bundle of that wood. It's still got the bark on it and stuff like that. In hardwood, but usually oak or chestnut. Most often is oak. And um, and you get I get bundled that for twenty quid, and that's like getting a whole cubic meter of wood. I suppose the time you got the wood out of it, you're probably got about half a cubic meter, if not less. But still, for twenty euros, cheap as chips. So I just go down there and I just load load me one in the back of the trailer and I'm away again. And if it's no good for the um, 
you know, if it's the rubbish that I... Obviously, a lot of it's gone in no good, but that goes to heat the house. So it's not very, very big, is it? Nothing gets wasted around here. Besides, we want to get, be warm as well, you know? I really want a pellet burner, though. That's what I really want. More than here, would be good as well. But the only thing is the dust. And they're constantly drawing dusty air through it. It's just going to be um, a problem, I imagine. My thinking, anyway. I imagine it would be a problem. Well, I've got a roll of sandpaper here somewhere. I can never find what I want. Oh, so there's a roll there. Uh, oh, that will do. This cheapy sandpaper from Action is a bit fine for the first bit. That's all right, it's not brilliant though. Um, what have we got down here? What about 80 grit, really? 60. A used 60 will be fine. Because it's not really a 60, it's like an open grain 100 now. Yeah, that'll do. A bit of hand sanding, a bit of TLC. You know how it is. That's it, that's it, isn't it? Not too much pressure. And I'm not actually going to worry about going down to too fine a grits for this, because when we blow torch it, as you can remember, any fluffy bits will be burnt away. Anyway, what's the point? Just got to make sure that, you know, I've got any surface fluid that's on the surface out of the way, and, you know, the obvious stuff. Like okay, here's a bit nasty. Oh, I'm dropping things now. Oh, I done started my uh, in mind and the missus go fund me for our tree. Yeah, we basically what we're doing is we've got about two hectares here for which we want to plant up the trees. But not just trees, we're going to be doing other stuff as well. We'll create habitats, such as little bird boxes, bat boxes, owl boxes, you know, nesting boxes of owls, what have you. Because um, we do have a hell of a lot of wildlife here. But the farmers being farmers, they're removing more and more and more of their habitat. The hedgerows, for instance, there isn't any anymore. Oh, God. A bit like the UK, they'll all be replaced with wire fences because it's easier to maintain, plus they can electrify them. Which is you know, quite a crying shame. The old, um, you know, I've done this before with our business, and that we used to do layering, where you'd literally split a sapling down the middle. So you plant your, basically you plant your hedge, hedgerow, whether it be blackthorn, hawthorn, dog, dogwood, black, definitely blackthorn and hawthorn, anyway. Um, sort of the English hedgerow. And the idea being is you, you allow your saplings to grow to a certain height, then you'll get in there with your bill hook and you'll split them down the middle and you'll lay one down and put a couple of um, hazel sticks driven in either side um, and it holds itself there. But the idea is you're kind of netting and you're weaving it in. So as the hedge grows, you're constantly weaving and constantly, um, you know, it becomes impenetrable. A really good hedge. hedge. But the thing is, those skills are becoming lost. Um, there are still food farmers around here, actually, you, you still do that. But a lot of them, the more industrial farmers here, they're um, the same in England. Everything is just, uh, well, it's either left to its own devices or taken up and, you know, they put electric wire fences in instead. It's a crying shame, obviously, you know. Spoils the landscape. <coughs> when, um, if anyone's been to, like, Carlton, Edale, that sort of way, well, when you go between Carlton and Edale, you go over the, you go over the mountain, basically, between the two mountains. And uh, you come into, into Carlton, and if you look over the, uh, the hills, you can see all the old traditional... You know, uh, farmed areas with all little, you know, dry stone walls. And they're separated into lovely little kind of quaint little fields. But obviously, it's no good for mechanisation. Need to say, big tractors need, you know, bigger pigs of land, bigger the tractor, the more um, stuff you can actually grow. That's why I kind of think that um, George Eustace's, um, oh God, rewilding scheme is just. Just lip service. I, I don't think it's sincere at all. Um, quite frankly, I think it's just, well, it's a bit of a joke. Because at the end of the day, we need food. You know, people still need to eat. 
and your, a rewilding scheme is not going to produce the same amount of food as industrious farming. Uh, I don't like industrial farm, obviously. I think most people see the reason for that, because it's not good for the, for the environment. But the idea that we're going to go around and start just <laughs> grow more food using organic methods, nah, it just ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen. And it's just not realistic. What will happen is we'll end up importing more food. That's all that will happen. And we'll shift the problem somewhere else. It's still a world problem, isn't it? Just because we don't see it on our doorsteps. Not, it's, not, it's not really the point, is it? I do wish it wasn't the case, but... We, we need friendly management of these other farms. And industrial, farm is hot. industrial hot farming is bloody old anyway, I'm sorry French, but it is. But anyway, anyway, it's not the best channel I'm talking about for. What am I doing? Well, oh, my original point was going to be was managing woodlands. Woodlands need management. And habitats have to be maintained, ideally. I know you can say, why don't we just leave it? Because it used to be left that way. But we can actually help habitats. You know, you need a bit of everything, really. You need a bit of stuff that's left alone and just, you know, really wild and stuff like that. And, but then you need to think about disease. Because disease, and tr a lot of the um, fungal diseases, trees, are spread by the roots and the tether under the ground. And what happens is if you don't maintain a cleanliness below, you, know, you have to create like no man's areas around certain areas. So for instance, if you want that to do what it's thing and just be really, really organic, really, you know, uh, have real biodiversity going on there, well then that's fine. But you really need to separate that, the next lot of trees, you know, the, the next forest away from it by having a no man's land in between. So those root, roots don't, Potentially infect, you know, like, like oh, like, um, oh, like, is it, like dieback and stuff like that. Ser serious condition, you don't lose, you know, look what's happening in the UK, you've lost so many species of trees for this forever, they're gone. But anyway, my point was originally was my GoFundMe. We, I only put it on last night, we've got like three, uh, 290 euros in it already. I thought, wow, that's amazing. You know, um, some, you know, someone from, you know, friends of the family and stuff like that, which is brilliant, but also from just doing a post on the YouTube channel. Uh, and I'll be doing, I, I will be doing a video about it as well, because I need a video for um, the GoFundMe page. But it's going to take quite a long while to sort out. This is going to be an ongoing project, because it's, we need about, well, it's going to be about a thousand trees. It's not, you know, it's not hood plantation, but it's only two hectares, so that, that's pretty much the maximum we can get on there. But like I say, we want to create habitats. Not, it's not just about the trees. It's about the wildlife. Because we're quite fortunate here, you know. Um, we've got all our bird boxes and stuff at the back of the house there, and in the mornings, it's amazing. All these different species, loads of you know, like robins and obviously great tits, and blue tits, and um, oh, these other things we get in the spring. Really colourful, they look like a parrot. Uh, hoopoes, hoopoes, a hoopoe, that's it, hoopoe. They are, they do poop everywhere, mind. <laughs> they do, they're, they're very, um, yeah, they produce a lot of poo. But they're gorgeous animals, or birds. And the wuzzle. Yeah, so it's quite nice, you know. It's really fluffy pine, and it's an awful bit of wood. But that's what I got, so that's what I'll use. Now this is the worst way of cutting sandpaper. The best way is an old hacksaw blade, screwed to a piece of wood, and screwed to the side of your bench somewhere. So you just just do that. Works a treat. So all the finer paper now. Like I say, I'm not trying to go, go mad with it. No point. In fact, I don't even know I'm doing that, to be honest. But we are. Because what happens when you start blowtorching it, all that fluffiness will go. And any really soft wood will be burnt away anyway, so I'm not too worried. God, that's awful sandpaper, that is. It's 
cheap. Definitely not Norton or Oakley or Merger. I think this is stronger than the first looks, apart from the bit down the bottom there. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, I love making things like this. This kind of make me tick a little bit. I mean, it's kind of a bit of fun. Isn't it? I don't think you need to go much further than that, to be honest. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to look at the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it looks pretty cool. It's, yeah, it's got a bit, little bit of de detail on it. Yeah, it's not exactly um, fine carving, is it, or fine work, but... Um, I think we need blow torture. Let's do some blow torching. We've got to do a bit of blow torching. Right, I've got my metal box. Tin thing. Uh, blow torch over here, which is getting low on gas again. I mean, just got that. <laughs> well, I could put it in the, in the fire. Oh, the fire's doing well today. I don't have to touch it. Oh, but you can wall on there, though, because it's done its job. I don't really want smouldering away when I'm back in the house, you know. I think a little bit of safety. Oh, anyway, let's see what you're saying. Oh, what, what, what? <laughs> oh, God, now we're going to have to do it now, Jasper. <laughs> Oh, you're incorrigible, you are. That you are. <laughs> That's it, it's going to have one. It's just below the tail. What could be actually part of the tail? No, just... Mm. I tell you, it's going to have to have an arsehole, though. Because every time... Because what we're going to have, we're going to, I've got a little bit that I'm going to take off the other box, which is like a little sliding door, and we hide the key behind that, behind the box. Um, it's like a little little sliding door, and the, and the little hook behind it. And the, yeah, anyway. Uh, I'll put, I'll put the, the rocking horse's bum, bum hole, in this case, the gargoyle, wooden gargoyle's bum hole. Just above it, just to annoy the missus. <laughs> Poor Caroline. <laughs> oh dear, got to do it. <laughs> got crested heads like Mohicans. Oh. <laughs> My main instruments were flute. And clarinet. Oh, really? But I could play piano and a bit. Well, I've been. I used to like playing a bit, of, a bit of guitar, might have you. But I got to a point where I was really struggling with it because carpal tunnel. So I, my, um, I sold my guitar. And that was a Schecter S1. Really, really lovely guitar, all mud and port pearl and all that. But I sold it. I couldn't play it. I've got, a I've got drums, but I'm struggling with I keep dropping sticks now. <laughs> so I just drop everything. <laughs> i tell you something, the carpal tunnel is a real pain. Like this morning I, I woke up and my hands were like numb. My left hand especially was completely and utterly numb. What you have to do is you dang it down inside your bed, out the bed, out the bed, it's freezing cold at the moment, out the flipping bed. And then so you get your circulation back and it seems to be okay again. And what it is is the... Um, in, there's a carpal tunnel in your wrist. It's called. It's, like, it's a bit bone, basically, and all your nerves and your tendons go through that little tunnel. And for years and years of doing what I do, you create a lot of scar tissue in that area, and it, it basically restricts the amount of space for the nerves. No, and and the tendons. So what happens when you sleep? Your tendons heal. So all that work you do in your hands, your tendons heal. And when they heal, they swell up. They trap the nerves. And that's when your hand goes numb, and if, if you've got carpal tunnel. Um, the, the other problem I, I suffer with a little bit is, is trigger finger, um, which literally when you finger that and it locks up like that, and you've got literally a ping at a guy, like, and what that is, is that your tendons have got like little nodules on them where they're uh, a boost again, you know, RSIs and all that. And um, those little nodules get caught behind the guides because they're like almost, you know, there's organic guides, you know, bits of bone or whatever it is, and they get caught behind these guides. A bit like fishing rod. And, and, and it, until you actually give it a little bit of extra pressure, they don't pull through. So, yeah, you get trigger finger. Pain. The pain in the neck. So, your hands lock up. And a lot of that's down to constant gripping of machines and tools. And I've had the operation, and it, 
it made a huge, huge difference. And I don't generally have much problem unless I do a lot of um, physical work. And the thing I forget to do is wear my gloves. Because I've got a pair of, I usually wear like, um, oh, not Goldie gloves, but my bikes are cycle gloves, MTB gloves, you know, mountain biking gloves. So fingerless leather gloves. And they've got padded palms. That's what I know what was wearing. I can't find, got one. I can't find the other one. <laughs> so I need to get a buy a new pair. It's silly not doing it because it's just, um, you know, it's, you suffer, basically. It's not great. You wake up in the middle of the night. And you think, oh, crikey, what again? And then you can't move anyway. You've got, you've got a wally kind of nestled on himself in between your legs. And you didn't realise he was there. So you've got, you're getting back pain there because you can't stretch your legs out properly. Little salt. <laughs> wally has in the dog. My little wally boy. He's getting older now. I don't, I don't, I don't like to say no to him. You don't know how long you can have him for, do you? No. Such a lovely little boy. So, so when, you, when you, some animals you just have a, such a connection with. There you go, there you go. What is that, that little fella? We went for a walk today. Oh, oh my tail's caught a light. Oh my God. Oh dear. Oh no, it's, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let that do its thing. It's helping. Oh no, it's getting bigger. I think we have a, literally got a fire. Not now. <laughs> Make sure there's no gas bottles nearby. <laughs> Just like when I made that wood burner over there and I had to cut a gas bottle in half, I was, I'd be so ginger with it. You know, first of all, I had to get the valve off, which wouldn't come off. I could not get that valve off to get, you know, to make sure there's no gas in it and fill it with water. So what I did, I drilled the hole, very carefully drill the hole in it and spray water over it at the same time while I was drilling the hole. Just make sure there's no gas in it. Nothing was coming out of the valve, mine, but, you know, you get residual gas. I thought, God, when you cut it open, I cut it open with a jigsaw, the gas bottle, and took, cut it to two, the gas bottle. And uh, the smell... You know they put in gas. They put a um, bit of pot, bit of a nasty, tasty type stuff, smell in it, so you, you know it's gas. So you know you've got a gas leak because the gas itself is pretty. You know you can't really smell it. So they put this stuff in it to make it stink, like a rotten egg, sulphur or something like that. Anyway, it kind of gets into the steel of the gas bowl, and you don't realise it until you open it up. And you've got crikey, there's no gas in there, but this stinks horrible. It's doing the job. I might just paint that end bit. You know, it's tail tail. Uh, red, like the, t like the tongue, I think I will. It kind of ties the back end of the front end then. This side looks really nice, actually, to be honest. It's really cool. See, so when you burn it, you get all, see the resin bits, all these little lines you get. It's very cool. I, I, I'm, isn't it? I'm telling you it's cool, okay? So it is. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I was hoping, you know what, when, when I went to revive this channel, I was really hoping I'd get like a video, a an actual edited video up every single day, but that with the other channel as well, it's, become, it's proven to be harder than I've than I envisaged. That's one of the reasons why I thought, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll, I, I'm not, I can't, I haven't got a one to edit and get on quick enough today, so oh, I know, we'll go live, why not? But live videos don't they perform differently to the um, recorded videos. That looks lovely. Oh, that's it. It's back again. They, they perform differently. Like the other chat, my other channels, obviously, it's trending content. But this is like this is like evergreen type content. And talking about evergreens, I'm talking about the uh, other project we got we started regarding the trees. It looks like we're going to we're going to be on a bit of a shopping spree regarding by organising some trees but what we're going to do first we're going to see if we can get a, a, a deal with our we've got a nursery nearby literally about three kilometres from where I live at a nursery they sell trees which is quite handy I'm wondering whether or not 
once I've got the uh, um, GoFundMe all sorted out with the videos and stuff like that, maybe I can get him to sponsor us. Because for him, it's not a huge, you know, it's not a huge amount. Yeah, reduction. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not asking for free trees, but it'd be quite nice if we get a bit of a discount. But he's a bit of a character, though. He's got his office that's covered in <laughs> all the wall. <laughs> There's always like page three pictures of wi uh, of women and what have you, and old, you know, dirty calendars and stuff all over the walls. I thought, what the hell? I thought, crikey, you can't have that. Yeah, I know, we might be in France, but God, and banner. I mean, it's quite raunchy stuff. Me and curtains and all that, you know. Is that right, being good? Oh, anyway. <laughs> but just, you can imagine it, can't you? You, you, you get um, somebody who's a little bit politically correct going there, and, you think, and they see all that all over the walls. They just ordered all these trees, about to go and pay in the office with a manky old frax machine that he's had, you know, for donkey's years, covered in grease and God knows what else, because it's never been cleaned. Place is a mess. Anyway, there we go. Right, there we go, there we go, there we go. Right, I think that's something pretty cool. I think that's alright. Do you think that's okay? Will that do? I think that'll do. Yeah, I might burn the tail a bit more just for hell of it. Because I can. Okay. It's my tail and I'll play with it, I want to. Play with it, oh, I want to. You would play with it. No, if it was, oh, I can't make that work. No. Probably going a little bit far. There we are. There we go. Cool. It's very dark and sordid and kind of scorched earth. Anyway, that, that'll do. That's on. I think we can get that on. That's our next plan. Let's get that on. Let's screw its tail on. And then, um, do you think I'm ready to screw it on? Or do you think I need to do a bit more work with it? I could paint, the, paint that bit. I quite like the extra scorchy bit on the end, actually. I don't know if I want to. I might give it a little bit of a hint of red, but not overdo it. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a swan. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll go shoot it and have it for my lunch. I might have it for Christmas, you know. Oh, no, I'm not the queen. <laughs> Why, well, Mrs. Just asked if you're making a swan. Woo! <laughs> That's a gargoyle's tail. I hope you put her right. Oh dear. Hello, Mo Green. Waves, wings, and a spectacular eight entry. Yes, it is going to be. Well, we've got the tail. I think that's good enough for the tail. Like I say, it's a letterbox. It's not going in the house. No, it's going in front of the house. So let's, let's see how we're going to do this, shall we? Oh. I'm really going to have to do a project. We're going to make a, a workshop stool, I think. I think that's another project that we made. Because I could do with one with wheels on. So next time we're good action, I'm going to buy some of them cheap wheels. Big roller cars. Like the sort of things you put on the bottoms of trolleys. So we've got a spine there. That Ooh. Ooh, Scratch its back. Oh, it likes it. It does. Oh, see? You can tell, can't you? Its tongue's coming out. As you talk about that, my, my little um, Pandora, my little black dog... <laughs> She comes up to me and she nestles her bum against me because she likes just top of her tail, yeah, bottom, base of her tail, scratch her really vigorously, and then and then she looks like that. Her tongue comes out. <laughs> oh, it's like a fetish is. She's a saucy little thing, she is. Right, so that's gonna go on there. It's a little bit proud. So I feel I want a mm, doesn't matter. Let's have a question. I'll, <coughs> probably don't really matter to be honest. Might have been pedantic. I think I am. Where this, where's, the rock, where's the gargoyle's bum hole going to go then? That's the other thing, that's got to be there. Right. So we're going to have to... It's a curtain... Right, that can be fixed onto the end of that one. I've got that bit here that's a bit vulnerable. But once I've screwed down to the box, which we, I'm going to plug that, I'm going to screw and plug that down, like so. 
But what we do need is a bit of glue. So I'm going to mix a bit of glue up, but I don't need too much glue today, I don't think. So what we're going to do is mix a little bit. <laughs> I'm not going to use PVA because I don't like it. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a lot. I do like it but for the right job, though. And I don't think this is it because it's going inside. Hmm. Oh, wind. Why have I got so much wind these days? Is it, is it alcohol? Be no alcohol for me soon. The cupboards are nearly bare of alcohol now and also carbohydrates. So I'll be going on my low carb diet very soon. No alcohol. Hope I need to shed at least 10 kilos. My plan? Done it before, I'll do it again. And then I go mad and eat again and put it all back on. And then we have another diet. It's called the roller coaster diet, yeah. New technique, you know. So I've, I've learned to accept the fat and fat. So I just kind of like, in case of the fact that I want to um, lose weight for health, really. Because I do notice my health deteriorates rapidly when I put weight on. I lose the weight and then I'm sort of like, oh, I'm okay again now. I'm more agile, I'm more fit. I don't get out of breath so much. And plus, I suffer with asthma, and that that actually, that and and fibromyalgia. So it's kind of like that and those two together. When I lose the weight, they disappear. Don't know why that is, but I just do. I don't, I don't, when it, whenever I get my weight off me, I'm, I'm I don't have any of those sort of um, problems. I saw a couple of times syndrome. Can't, you can't get rid of that, but um, the fibro don't kick off. And then you, if anyone, I don't know if anyone has fibro on here, but um, it's not pleasant. I'll tell you. Fibromyalgia, which basically means, you know, it's, it's Latin. I suppose, you know, it's been pain, pain in the muscles. And it's, it's usually all your major muscle groups that suffer, like your back and your legs, stuff like that. You know, they're, they're the ones you really get, and not only my chest muscles, of course, here, around the diaphragm. Get quite painful. I had a scare when, when it first started kicking off. This was a few years ago. Caroline was in England, um, and uh, I was had I had this problem. So I went to the doctors, and they sent me straight to the hospital to have all the tests. And they did all the heart disease tests and blood t yeah, blood tests and stuff. The blood tests come back within hours, you know, full blood tests. And that come back clear anyway, and they did all these here. That's fine. I mean, there wasn't a problem with the heart. That was my fibro. It's really common, apparently. But like I say, most of my problems evolve around weight. So I allow myself to get, because I'm about 96 kilo at the moment, I'm way over, way over what I should be. Good, uh, I think a good weight for me, if I, a good healthy weight for me would be around 76 kilo. Because I'm not very tall. I'm five foot seven, so I'm not, not very tall. So um, I'm quite stocky, I'm quite muscular as well, I know all this fat. See, it's, it's, it's muscle, you know, it's muscle. It's all muscle. One big muscle. So, um, yeah, but no, it's kind of like my own worst enemy, really. And what I find is I get a little bit um, anxious. I have a little bit of anxiety. I kind of get a bit nervous and stuff like that. I get really nervous when I, before I do these streams. Really nervous. And I start doing them absolutely fine. So I don't know why I'm getting nervous. I just, just me. I've always been like that. My mum was the same. Now I've got to leave that for a little bit, let that soak, let it do its thing. Let's see what melt the melt the pot. We're going to glue and screw that into place. And we've got to think about these wings. Also, I need to think about these st stiffeners on the side there, but that's a bit of a boring one. We've got to think about these wings. That's what we're going to look at, the wings. Because that's what I said we're going to look at, isn't it? I said about the wings. Now, I printed these kind of templates. I don't really need a template, really just draw it on, to be honest. It's just so simple, isn't it, you know? Um, but I think they're just too small. I don't know, maybe not. I don't know, it might, if they're too big actually, it might block the view of the tail, so... But I think they need to be a little bit bigger than that. And I've got... To, oh dear, be careful. <laughs> um, could have broke it, I could. I've got a piece of board over there, which was a back and board for the old stairs that we ripped out. We put... Basically, when we first came here, um, we did... A bit of my studio now. It used to be all ceiling, there was no mezzanine in it, and now we've actually got some mezzanine. We took half the ceiling out, which is now the studio upstairs. Some of you are seeing that. And um, 
and the point, the point, the point is, the staircase that was in there, we took out, and we made a, like, uh, like <laughs> we call space saver staircase to go into the attic, and it's where you have like, one tread cut out, another tread cut out, and you know, real nightmare getting up and down. But anyway, we ripped that out now, and it'll give me a little bit of pine, because it's just a cheapy, cheapy thing we did, knock up for a pine staircase. Um, but we had some backing, but some backing, which is literally just pine floorboards that we nailed on the back of the stairs, and here is a bit of it. So, oh, if I bring it over here, I'm going to use that, or cut into that, for our wings. And it's just glued up floorboards, and it's got a bit of white paint on it as well. <laughs> That's what it is, yeah, floorboards. So I thought, oh, I don't know, we'll use them for the wings. It's a little bit thinner than the other material. Probably better pine, saying that. Some bits aren't glued up as well as it should be. But that'll be all right. That'll be all right. So just got to decide on what we're going to do regarding these wings. There's big old knots in it, but I don't know. What about that? As in, they've been filled. Filled knots. Obviously, it's not... I'm not making two wings this big. Because I think that would be a little bit big, wouldn't it? Yeah. But I think we can have them a little bit bigger than this. So what I'll do is, I think, I'll, um, I'll cut one out, and reverse it, and use that as a pattern for the next one. And then we'll decide on how we're going to do the intarsia. Which, quite frankly, is, would work really well on this. But as you see on the drawing here, on the Natasi here, we have all these thin bits. That is not necessary. So what we do is, literally, that would be one line, that would be another line, and we'll rotate that out to create the relief. Probably an arras, not a roundover. Um, and that would come off. So that you have the two arrases. So effectively, it'll give you that effect anyway, if you know what I mean. So I don't think it's necessary. So we're not, not going to go tight, but it will work anyway, that falls bits. If I, if I do the same as that, it'd be too thin. Nothing to it. How's this glue doing? It's getting there. Yeah, it's getting there. A bit longer. So, I was looking at it. It would make sense uh, that the grain goes long ways. You know, to the length of the actual, to the height. So, I may, re oh, I don't like that one there. So, might be, be oh, e, ah, oh, fifth nine. Not for the big knot, that's got a big knot there, big knot there, that'll make it weak. So, we'll do it from that side. Um, we're going to have, have to be able to mount it, that's the other thing. How are the wings going to be mounted? Ooh, I think then it'd be nice if I could make them straight off the spine. But then it wouldn't look like a butterfly. <laughs> I don't want to look like a butterfly, that'd be silly. Hmm. Well, how are we going to do that then? Oh, decisions. If it's all the way back here, I should have thought about this before actually. Well, it could be all the way back then. I'm trying to think of how we're going to mount them. In some ways, I like the idea of using something like this, but mounting them onto this like broom handle and then driving the broom handle into a hole. Sure, so you don't see a lot of it, obviously. Um, because obviously we've got a lumpy spine. I think at this stage, let's make the wings and then decide what we're going to do with them. Obviously, if you look at the wing itself, it has... This is where, obviously, where it'd mount on, you know, if it was a real gargoyle, it'd be that area there. That would be the bone, and it'd have, you know, sometimes you see them with, like, hands or claws on and stuff, don't you? Come to this section here. The dragon. Um, and then it flares off from that. So what we could do is have that bit coming up, and then that is the wing, that section there. Not No wing section here at all, all coming off there. I think it might work if I did that. Because then that could be the section that mounts. I can mount on any part then. Because obviously if the base is too wide, where would it go? I think that's my plan. But it'll have to be fairly thick. It'll have to be a lot thicker than what that is, obviously, because it'll be weak otherwise. And making sure the grain is going in the right way. Because that is, if that's going to be on its own, that's going to be the vulnerable part. That's not too bad, but that, that there will be vulnerable. So the, gra the grain needs to go along that, otherwise it'll snap. If it's going across the ground, ground, grain, grain. I'll get my words out. I'll get my worms out. I'm going to start over there. Like I said, what bigger than that? Not hugely bigger, but needs to be bigger. Yeah, 
probably that. If I was going up to there, yeah, it's probably about right, I think. I can't go through that because there's a knot there. So we're going to have to sketch it first. So one line. Don't be frightened, you just, got, you just got to go for it. So you've got that first line. <clears throat> then we're going to have. That's oh, right. Mm. Sort of. Look at Mumble, mumble, mumble. No, give me that. I'll just come straight down. Mm, more of a sweep, I think. I went astray! It's no good, where's my sander? I do. Got more of a... That's better. Okay, uh... Also, like I said, I want that wider. I don't want it where there's a join. So we're going to go quite wide at that point. So I know it's going to hold it. Like so. Maybe not quite. I'll go over a marker pen in a minute anyway, but um Remember we're dealing with wood. <laughs> Obviously that, that can be an issue. So sort of like that. So that'll be a separate piece, and then that'll be. I'm having to figure through in the sense that what that's going to be in tars here. So you can't just do what's on there because it just won't work. It's a bit of artistic license, really, isn't it? And so you've got to make it so it, you know, it does its, does, does its job. Maybe that one come a bit wider. And then that one. <laughs> so many lines. Which one is it? That's better. Not quite as wide as that. I'm getting a little bit long here. Go to the R. And then I don't want to come past this line. Got is it me or has it got really big now? <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> like so. Oh, no, 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 that's alright. There's a million lines there, so I've got to work out which one it is. <laughs> so get a marker. I can always rub it off, can't I? I can always get the sand and rub it off. I want to get two here, and as I've done it, it's probably not. I might be just a while to think, okay, we'll do that a bit over there. So it doesn't matter. Probably make more sense, actually, because I've got longer boards left over. I don't want to go over this one. At the moment, it's coming too far. So... I'm quite happy to have that like so. Uh, maybe more like that. That's good. Like that. So then that one will be... Like so. That's airspace. So that one's part... The wing actually starts here. Yeah, that's it. Like so.
concentrating I am, I'm concentrating. Oh, I've got a bit of zozos here. I think I might be better off having an extra bit in there. Instead of one big one. Or should we just have one big one? Or do we take make that one that one bigger? Or make that one bigger? Starts that one, that one gets bigger. I think that one needs to be bigger. So we'll have to remove that. There. We can remove that as well. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Then we're going to go to there, to there, not past that board. Because obviously, it's, you know, we've got the tongue groove in there, so it goes into the tongue groove, the tips will have bits of tongue groove in, that won't work. And it's, I'm just going to put a spike there, there, like so. One spike. Maybe a bit, maybe that'll be, I think it'll be a bit fatter than that, that's it, like that. Don't want it breaking off. Because we're dealing with wood. So now this one, instead of being all the way over here, needs to be sort of sweeping around to there. So then that one be like so ish. Maybe looking at them, really these need to be further in. A little bit of an artistic license. Because I want those little spiky bits. So that needs to be removed a little bit, so we can get it on there. So that's going to be a spike, like a... Oh, I don't know, I don't know if you can do that on, that, on this. don't know if that'll work. Because I ain't got that central, central piece, so we'll, we'll do away with them. We do have them, they're going to have to be... If we'll run them over the road, but they'll disappear. We better stick the bits on afterwards if we could do that. That one could. I'll well, we sand that back a little bit. They could cut this out with a jigsaw, quite happily. For, you know, for the bulk of it, and then I could do the rest on the bandsaw. Getting full of sawdust now, the actual, yeah, sanding dust. Stuff like that. I think that's narrows down it. So you've got to be careful. If, if I've done all these little details, all, these bits will all be too thin, that would all be too thin, everything too thin. So when I run, try to get it round to make shape it up, it'll just break off. It just won't work. That's what I'm telling you, that's why I'm sticking to it, I am. I'm sticking to it. A bit like that. Just like that. I think that's not too bad. I think maybe that one here needs to be a little bit shorter. A little bit less. That's it, more like that. Yeah, that's better. That one there, I might... Oh, I'm looking at that. Do I want that like that or not? You've got to remember, once I take that arras off, rotor of that up, there ain't going to be a lot of that left. Although it'll be fine, once it's glued up again, it will be fine. But if I go too heavy there, it's going to look terrible. Oh, decisions, decisions. That's what we could do. I hope we could do. Hope you can see all the way over there. Probably not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a bit thinner here so, so this piece here becomes thicker then tapers down a little bit. It gives me a little bit more to play with. I'll start having, when I start shaping these up. They're not going to be white. That'll be cleaned off. That's better. I'm quite happy with that. I think that shape is okay. I think that'll do. What do you reckon? That's a wingish type gargoyle shape. Bearing in mind that obviously I've got to think about the um, fact it's got, you know, it's got to be strong enough to stay, you know, to, to be there, to stay there. But it's got to be about up here. It's fair. <laughs> so, uh, it's all be up there. But Tom said, like, you know, wing like. A bit like that. Just like that. Now, should we, oh no, before, um, the glue's ready. I will need more glue than this because when we start um, doing the tiles here for these wings. So anyway, uh, so let's put this one side for a second. And let's fix this tile on before it gets broken. Can't have a broken tile, no. No broken tiles, thank you. 
that way round, like so. Then we've got to think about this rock horse bum hole. In this case, a gargoyle's bum hole. You, why do I keep going about rock horse bum holes? They're like the little, you know, I think you might see them. You can see like, um, like a wooden door no draw knob or door knob. And it's like a little round turned thing. And you just shove it in a hole in the door. So you've got like a little pull. And they're made of wood. And we call them rocking horses bum holes. That's what we call them. That's what I call them anyway. I don't know why. Obviously I know why. So let's just uh, glue that on there like so. Do, 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 do. Bit of glue there. Bit of glue up there. No, it's a bit much, you know, quite a lot of glue actually. I don't need that much. It's all going to ooze out. But so what? It doesn't matter. Because we can wipe it away. So we're going to glue that on there. And it's, I don't want the centre part of the tail because I think the centre of the tail is actually there. That's the centre of the tail. So I just want to make sure it's mounted to where we want it to go. Quite happy at that. So I think it makes sense to first put my screw into the spine. Yes, I'm pinning the spine. And then we're going to fuse some discs together. Yeah, all that. You know, you know you do. I really need to sharpen this drill bit. I've got a chuck key. Where's the chuck key? I saw that earlier. I'm looking for my chucky. Come here. Well, they're chuckies. Is it? Is that the chucky? Yes, we have a chucky. Very good too. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you. Didn't fit very well. That's not the chucky. That's the wrong size. Too skinny. We had to those men. It's not there. I don't think that's the right chucky because that's too loose. Why can't I find anything anymore? Oh well. Well, you know, I found it. I'm just going to sharpen this drill bit because the actual drill bit itself in this plug cut bit is actually really, really, really blunt. So I'm just going to go over there where that angle grinder is, not angle grinder, that um, bench grinder, and sharpen it quickly. Got my pot of water nearby. Keep the bit cool. Don't get in the water. Using the side of the wheel because it's flat. When you shut and draw, you kind of twist it onto the wheel. Yeah, you know, you're spinning it almost, you know, you're not, you're not trying to create a flat grind. What happens, the back will become proud of the front and then it won't sharpen. No, it won't draw, sorry, it won't, won't cut. Hopefully that is better. It's quite hard not a tiny bit like this. Let's drill a hole in its tail, into its spine. <laughs> Deep enough so you can accept the plug. Let's stick a little plug in it. La 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 la. Battery drill, little standy one. These are good, these. I bought two of these last last year with vouchers. <laughs> you know, you get your food, you get little tickets, you, you know. 
a bit like uh, co-op stamps. <laughs> They've got a drill. <laughs> Literally half price. It's got about 50 quid. So, 50 euros, I should say. And they've been really good little drills so far. I'm quite happy with them. <laughs> my other ones, my other small drills like these, these little 12 volt ones, but my other small drills are starting to get a bit tired. Batteries were, well, one battery I left out in the rain, stupid idea, because electronic only modern batteries are lithium, lithium iron. Well, anyway, that, that didn't do any good, so it failed. And that was on a little Triton drill. It's like pinning bones together. Carried away, I sort of lost, well, I forgot about it. Left it outside. Next one. We've got one there, that should be enough, shouldn't it? A, bit like, a little bit careful because this is. um. End grain, so yeah, cross grain, so not split it with a screw. <laughs> now that one's a bit thicker, so I'm gonna put a pilot hole first, so I don't end up uh, well splitting it, like I was saying. Not pilot hole, a clearance hole. Glue. <laughs> well, we put some more plugs in there. We did cut some, didn't we? Where they are? We'll be about here somewhere. Got <laughs> oh, batteries that need changing. I've got spares, so it's not a problem. All right, that's on there. I think it's fairly sturdy. I'm going to put a bit of glue in that little split there. It's just shrink the drill. So <laughs> Tacking it with blow tools, she's like shrunk the wood. It's tight on that side, this side's a bit gappy. I can see the glue, I can see the joint break there. That's where I've blow torched it and it's actually like um, shrunk even more. But it's not, you know, it's not going to come off. It's still, it's got that dowel going down it. I wasn't being that careful, was I? No. So it's got a tail. It's got a tail, isn't it? It's got something to scratch. Good, good, good. So now we're on wing duty. Yes. Bomber command. <laughs> I know that. That's nuts, isn't it? It's nuts. Do you not time it? It's time. Do, 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 do. Take care, just me and videos, buddy. Oh, you're off to work, are you? You take care, friend. <laughs> the bum all can say donate here. <laughs> oh dear, very good. <laughs> I've got to watch you with material. <laughs> Drilling into the. Oh god, really? Oh dear. A little red slipped disc on the spine. Oh, you could, couldn't you? The gargoyle's licking the letterbox flaps. Oh my God, really? <laughs> it's a family show. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, attached to the shoulders at the little... Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, could that. Back of the head down to the feet. Yeah, could do. <laughs> oh. oh, that really. 
<laughs> oh, Paul McCartney, the wings. There, he's banned. Oh God! Oh my God! What? <laughs> There's a lot of innuendo going on here. Saucy people, you are. <laughs> Very good, Mo Green. Oh God, really? You could eat swans in France. Is that why there isn't many? You actually don't see many swans there, actually. See lots of herons and obviously ducks. <laughs> Very good. Right, let's get to it. All right, it's, it's wing, wing, wing duty. <laughs> so we've got one I've scribbled out here. At the moment, it's a bit big to be manhandling onto the uh, bandsaw. So I think we'll just cut that out with the jigsaw. It's up and start with to get you know to get started. And beans, I have a jigsaw. Why the hell not? It might be easier. I hope it's got a sharp blade in it. Now I have a Bosch jigsaw, very good tool it is too. I've got a uh, Hitachi one as well, but the Bosch one is just far superior. Oh, it's got milk. <laughs> My God, tell I don't use that often. I don't think I've used this jigsaw for about a year. How I know that is, is because it's got a metal cutting um, jigsaw blade in it. Oh my god, what have I done with that cable? Me telling people how to coil their cables up and then I do totally the opposite. There we go. Uh, where is my boom arm? We're going to change the blade in there because at the moment it's got a metal cutting back blade in that. And anyone who watched my um, video of me making that wood burner, that happens to be just there. When I cut the gas bottle in half, this is what I use. And also when I cut the top of the um, oh section of the wheel out, I use this as well. And that is one of the blades I used, which is blunt, very, very blunt. The last time I used that jigsaw, over a year ago. Crazy. The thing is, I have all these other tools. I don't actually need... I don't need this. I need the jigsaw, but I don't use it very often. Not at all. I used to. That's what happens. You have band saws and other stuff. Can't believe I ain't used jigsaw. It's nuts. God. <laughs> that is so so. I don't even say that, but uh, it's actually almost smooth. You find things that don't get cut. That's really 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 blunt. Cutting, cutting gas bottles. I need to find my jigsaw blades. I think they are here. There we go. I have a box of jigsaw blades. It says jigsaw blades on it, you see? That's how I know. And we want a just a box down wood cutting jigsaw blade. It's plastic. Is that me? Or are they are they coping saw blades? Do 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 saw blades. Box standard, not too coarse. I'll probably do. No, a bit she. And when you you look at your jigsaw blades, you always find it's the same bit that, that gets. You know, this one's been used. It's always the same few teeth because if you cut the same thickness of material all the time, that part there's still sharp and it's still sharp up here. So you never get to use the whole blade. One trick you can do is actually either screw. Temporary piece of wood on a bolt, temporary piece of wood on the bottom of your jigsaw. So you can just swap it over quickly, and that way, or just put a bit of wood on top, and that way you can make use of more of your blade. So as long as you've got that much going through, you'll be effectively having a new blade. If it will be tight, that is. Because some jigsaw blades are not cheap, they're quite expensive things. That's not really good. Oh, that's it, that one. Oh, come back here, you. Again, you can get cheap jigsaw blades these days, but they're, you know, you know, they're not always very good. Yep. 
And I don't like the quick release jigsaws. My um, Tarchy one's got quick release and they wear very quick. Very quickly does the quick release wear. That's my purpose then, just the old fashioned ways are the best. Simplicity, like me. Um, up you go. And it goes into the socket. See, we have power! Right. So I'm not going to go crazy, I just want to cut some of that out just so I can get it on, on the bandsaw and do it on the bandsaw. I can, get, I can get a better finished cut on the bandsaw, you see. So I'm just basically just going to hack it out. This is an oscillating jigsaw, so you've got different settings on here. And you can disengage and engage. It's engaged at the moment, but what that does is it makes, instead of the blade just going up and down, it oscillates. So you get more of a, you're scooping the cut. Well, on this, I can go a bit coarse now, so I've gone too. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll cut that out on the bandsaw, just the ex outside of it, before we cut these sections. So I'm going to then use that as my template on the reverse to cut it out, cut the next bit out. That's my plan. Do, 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 do. Hopefully that sorts stuff out, but that seems a bit um tight.
I'll cut all these lines ready. Then we'll, then we'll draw the other wing out. And then I'll then finish it off with the fret saw machine, the cut saw saw. I will need to remove that one. So I'll just pre-cut those ones, but we're not going to remove that just yet. But this bit here I need to remove because it's this one here, because that's free space, that's, that's actually not a part of the wing. So I need to do that on the, on the scroll saw, that bit there. But once we've done our measurements, our drawings, once we've drawn around this, um, you know, for the other wing, I'm keeping it like that, by the way. That's what I've done with the flow. Um, we'll then finish these bits off here, ready to do the intarsia. We won't have time to do both rings today, but if we can get one done, you at least you a bit to see um, what it's going to look like. <laughs> oh, there's nutties. Nutties of rootkey. There we go. Where's my chair? Oh, it's over here. Here's the channel, the Choo Choo Track 29. I don't want to give you a time. Well, oh, don't give a time. Whatever, I don't know. Can't remember. <coughs> I'm about to do exactly what I said I wasn't going to do. That's the wrong one. That's that one I want to remove first. Oh, there. There you go. If anyone wants to start doing a bit of woodwork, for a bit, yeah, decorative woodwork, get yourself one of the, a machine like this. Not as big as this one, but the scroll saw. They're great fun. Really, look, yeah, really good therapy as well because you can do all sorts of weird and wonderful things with it. Just pretty stuff if you want. I can't what it's called now. It's um, it's like a where you have a, a series of layers. So you basically cut different bits and you glue that on top. Then you cut another bit that glues. It looks really cool. Almost like three D. Really, really good. And you've got like um, a lot of Celtic kind of um designs using that technique. I can't remember what it's called. I'll have to check. It's, it's bugging me now. So you can kind of see the, the shape of the wing's going to be like, so you feel like, like so. Yeah, sort of, yeah, where are you? And then I'll be there like, like that. But we're going to do that intarsia in here. But first, I want to draw around this to get the pattern of this one for the next one. Because I've got to be a little bit careful, because when I glued these balls together years and years ago, um, I didn't put much glue in there because it was just, you know, it was just a backing board, it wasn't it was just the back of the stairs. But I see that it isn't that well glued, so it could break. So I'll be a bit careful. Yet again, that area there is vulnerable, so I might whack a dowel, just drill a hole, and just drive a dowel in there, just to be, yeah, make sure it doesn't break on me. Because it could quite easily. So let's bring it over here, and hopefully we can now 
but hopefully we will. We'll put that on there like so, in the same fashion as before, and we'll just draw around that for the next wing. But not that way around, no. Because I want the reverse of. To be honest, you get reverse of whatever you do anyway, but I want the reverse of on the face of the actual. It's going to have to go that way like that. <coughs> yeah, miss that knot there then as well. So now, I grab a pencil, I can draw round it, or I can use the, the marker pen even. Not that one though, because that one wasn't very good. Probably because I've filled it up with dust now. Again, this is doing a job. This is doing a mighty fine job it is too. Oh God, that's <laughs> um, Oh, I don't even remember it. Come at Samet the Milkman. Oh, uh, with Benny Hill, there's a song. About him and having, you know, fighting over a woman. Um, <laughs> with the baker. <laughs> oh, what's it called? Oh, it's a Benny Hill song anyway. That, was, that looked, it was absolutely hilarious. So I was watching that the other day, just clip come on and I thought, oh crikey. I was wondering what you could do. Parody with that, couldn't you? you? Could do one with Boris Johnson. I think that would be a laugh. Won't have to do it. <laughs> so, okay, with that first of all. Oh, oh, back! That's how you do it. <laughs> Sorry about that, I didn't notice my battery. It went, um. No, that's it, I'm back now. I should be back now. Are, we... Are you there? Are you all there? I was going to start a new stream, but, um. I, I think we're okay now. Can someone tell me? <laughs> I hope so. Dee 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 dee. Anybody there can tell me if we're here? I'm here! Yes! My own silly fault that was. I do apologise. I managed to re resume the stream. Sounds technical, doesn't it? But it's not. You press a button. But yeah, it's, it's a hologram. Hologram? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Is it really? Um, no, I, for some reason I forgot about my battery <laughs> on the phone. It can do two hours just about. After that, it's kind of like boong, and it kaput. And I forgot to plug that in. I was getting so carried away with what I'm doing. Have fun playing with your tools, you know, in your toy shop. Uh, not toy shop, toy shop, like wood shop, toy shop. I suppose it works. Anyway. I don't, I don't know if you saw, I, I, I drew round my wing just to get the mark on the other bit of wood and I kind of jigsawed it out. I oh, won't be doing that one today because it's got to take two of them along because we haven't done that one yet. No. What have I done with it? What? What was there? There it is. So what I'm going to do now is just going to have to cut those extra bits out. We started, didn't we, with the bandsaw <laughs> before my party went out. And um, we're going to finish that. Them out. So then we can do the intarsia bit. And once I cut them out, before I do the intarsia bit, as in do the right ring, I'm going to sand all that paint off because we don't want the paint on, do we? It'd be silly. Not much, no. No, 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 no paint on it. Thank you very much. So here we go. Off to the. It's a bit of a trek. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, there we are. We're there. That's it. Back to the scroll saw. And I've got this dangly battery you've got to worry about. Oh, dear. You know what I need to think about? I need to think about that little bag thing that ties to the tripod. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Surprised that after that I've still got 12 people here. <laughs> oh dear. Oh no, he's gone off. Oh no, we want to see the wing. Oh, oh yes. Here we go. And Tarsia, here we come. That's one. Put that over there. And now we're going to do the next bit. We very relied on the glue, isn't it?
Ne, ne, ne. Need to say, once it's all cut out, we've done our task, we've glued it all together, we'll have to obviously call that it, I think, because then we can let it, let it dry. So now we know what we're doing, and we've got a pattern sort of sorted out, and I've got to spend like half an hour trying to get a, a, ring, a ring piece onto a rubber piece. That sounds wrong. It'll be a lot quicker. There we go. Oh, wrong. So project ideas. I've got my whiteboard sorted out in the house. So I've been writing down the projects. And also, when I was talking about the GoFundMe for the um, trees. Oh, look at that. Look, that's a sort of a skiddy wing though. Like a claw. But yeah, it's just, um, then we can... Um, Talk about the trees and what have you, make all these black boxes and stuff like that. There'll be projects to do on here, and I think if I can do them in a way that is um, sim simple in the sense of just see how it goes together, you know, people can create themselves then, can't they? Their own versions of. The thing you think about is the size of the hole. People don't realise that in a, ba in a bird box, for instance, the hole's important, the size of the hole. Because you don't want bigger birds going in, in and eating the little birdies, no. Not a good idea. Which goes against the grain. And the little birdies don't like it either because they get eaten. They won't be very happy. No. I'm glad I was able to resume the stream. I need to look at that and you know, sort of remember how I did that because if that happens again. See the problem is you end up with an extra extra um video that might not be very long. Or might be too way too short, I don't know. Kind of guessing. So first of all we need to remove this paint. I'm just gonna use that sand over there, well, I say it's a sander. It's sandy because it's got a sanding disc in it. Oh, somehow I managed to put it around the tripod leg. Uh, how on earth did I manage that? I do not know. So I'm just going to move up here out of the way. <laughs> Unfred the tripod from the cave. That's the only thing with things with wires on. They always get caught around other things with wires on. It's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Right. Um, where is my non slip mat? Over here, or whatever, we'll use that. Now, like I said, before, like I mentioned before, this is actually a sound uh, like a pad you put underneath your washing machines, half of. And I'll cut it in half and I'll use it for, yeah, when I'm doing rate ring and stuff like that, I'll use it or sanding because it just, you know, stops them sliding about. Help with grip. Usually a good idea. I'm gonna put my dust mask on, I'm gonna put this. The air filter is on. Hat's gonna to have to come off so I can get my mask on. Now I mentioned it before. When you see, right, the doctors with the with masks like that on, do you honestly think they're doing the job? Because quite frankly, you breathe all your moisture in the air comes out of that vent. It's not really helpful, is it? Not with COVID, anyway. So that goes in there like that. Oh, where does it go? I imagine that one goes. No, I think that's that one. Uh, that must be that one then. And that one goes in there. You can see how it's going to look now, can't you? It's sort of coming together. I know this is quite chunky, but it has to be, I'll just fall the bits. 
that's pretty cool. So what we're going to do now is we've got to take it over to use the uh, router table which is over there. Oh, can you see it? Just there, there, there. And that's what we're going to route them on. Because I've got a, a, a chamfer bit in there which is just literally a 45 degree bit. And I think it looks quite cool. Like that, so. Grab the battery. I'm going to move you near the router table. We don't need the fence, that can come away. The ideal thing would be to have an insert in there, but um, I haven't got one the right size for that bit. And it doesn't, that bit's sticking out too far at the moment, so you don't need it like that. And I can't find one. There's an orange handled thing in there. Caroline helped clear up earlier. Did she put it in there? Nope. Did she put it in there? No, nope, I know. I've already looked in these drawers. It's not in these drawers. There's a special handle used. You can actually raise and lower the um, the bit from the top. Get a cutter. So I have to have to move in. Trying to that is. She was always with it. We don't that I don't, at the moment it's set way too high. We don't that much yet, come off. Because that'll be a bit over a bit, a bit too much. But there I reckon. Knock it off. Yeah, there's a, there's a fix in here. Uh yeah there. And you can wind it up down. It's so much easier. It's on wheels and pull it out. Oh so. Don't need that there, get out of the way. <laughs> oh it's noisy! I'll be back. The next thing the battery run out will be the microphone. But we can always unplug it if we have to. Let's do it without the microphone. So that's the face order. I'm not going to put the arrows on the back here, so I'll make sure I've got enough glue area. Otherwise I'll just fall the bits. <laughs> This is likely to happen on every single one of them. Hmm. Did, did, did. I think what I'm going to do is, so I don't have that happen again, I'm going to do the bulk of it on here, then the rest I'm just going to use with a sander on the points, because that's just going to happen on every single one. <laughs>
So I'll be careful of these bits here because you notice the corners, these end bits are snapping off. So um, we'll do them by another means. I'm going to pull up the back near the bench so we can glue this up. Dun, 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 dun. And finish off the areas that we couldn't do on there. But let's grab you, let's bring you back and your battery and your pacemaker. Ooh. Reminds me of uh, Iron Man when you have to cut that battery about. Oh, that was a car battery. I've still got my mask. I do generally wear a mask a lot in the workshop. But, um, it's very difficult when you're actually doing videos because obviously the sound is weird. It muffles everything up, doesn't it? But it's not really necessary at the moment. Oh. Oops. Sorry, that one just broke. Oh, a whole elastic thing. This is the one I normally wear. Is that thing. You can't hear a word I say in that. And it makes your face sweat, it's horrible. So we're gonna use this sander and just do those little pointy details so I don't end up losing more bits like that. Gonna work, we'll have to use a drill. <laughs> Don't watch they put. Did it? Ah, come on, it was own. See how that looks. And decide whether or not we want to take more out of it. Oh, I quite like that. That's looking nice. Is it that one or that one? I can't remember that. Oh, it's there, isn't it? Like that, like that. Is it that one? Nope, it must be that one. Oh, that jigsaw. Seems crazy. You cut all this stuff about, don't you? And then you have to kind of 
I want to take a little bit of that out there and a little bit of that out there because it doesn't look right like so. Need to be all about that one. This packing pad, I need to change. I've got one ready actually sitting here. I'll show you actually. Babe, all you do, normally what I do, turn unplug it first, which I haven't. So do as I say, not as I do. And that spins off, so you don't need to use any tools, you just do it by hand. So, and then you swap it over a new one, just screw it back on again. So, um, you don't have to tighten it up or anything, just do you know, tighten it by hand, just basically, just like that, that's enough. It tightens itself up, you see. Now the reason why you've got to do it, is when you get a disc like this, and your pack pad has become, or any disc, any sand disc, has become worn on the edges like that, this isn't holding down, that's why it does this, part of the reason anyway. Yeah, I'll do that anyway eventually, but not, you know, this is a fairly new pad, it's fairly sharp, so it's kind of ruined the pad. You can see the state of that back pad, it's, it's had it. So that's a chugger. Ooh. <laughs> I'll put it on there like so for a minute. You see even that bit there sticking on there, sticking on it sticks onto the edges. So you put a new pad new pad on, it'll last longer. You've got to be careful, you don't over wear the corns any, because yeah, as soon as the these edges are gone, the pad's knackered, isn't it? So I think we can glue it together now, can we? Let's have a look. I thought that was looking quite cool. Dee 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 dee. So what I'll do is I'll glue that and just push it in tight like that. I won't do anything else with it. I'll let it go off. And then we're going to put some fixings in it. Not today, because I want to dry, obviously want it to dry. Um, yeah, I think that's looking pretty cool. You could put a clamp there. You could even put a clamp there, actually. So you could do a little bit of clamping. And I have mixed some glue. Hopefully mixed enough. I don't think I have, but um, we'll see. So let's glue it up. It's quite cool though, isn't it? The, you get that relief. And that's intarsia for you. That's the nice thing about intarsia. It just gives you that kind of... Yeah, anyway, a little bit different, doesn't it, you know? I like a little bit different. I'm a bit different, I suppose. Not by choice. It just happened that way. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, at school now, I was kind of struggled at school a little bit. Because I was never really into football or anything like that. I always just want to make things all the while. Usually model aeroplanes. I used to always constantly when I was young, you know, making like chuck glides and stuff, you know, out of balsa. It's kind of who I was, you know, I just, I just loved it. And um, I joined a, uh, a radio, radio control, you know, a glider club, a radio control glider, it's called Eastern Radio Control Saurus. We used to fly at Fort Breck. I was only about 12. I, mean, I built this model from a kit. From um, a model shop, it used to be called Galaxy Models, now I think it's Pegasus Models now, it got bought out and uh, years and years ago. If, if they're still there, even though you don't know, they might not be there either now. Um, anyway, I bought this kit and it's, it was the most ugly looking glider I've ever seen. It was, it was like a square brick of a body, like a pod and boom, but all in balsa. Uh, but anyway, I made this thing and uh, it was, we, the wings were all built up. Polydihedral wings, so you've got there's tips and also dihedral in the middle, so yeah, there's like an angle in the middle, but also at the tips. Anyway, I, my first day um, at the club, I was telling, I, I keep going up there to sit, watch what they're up to, and you know, and so I'm building this and building this, you know. And it's called a, a Galaxy Models Puffin, that was called, yeah. And we built it with, it had a red foods, large and yellow wings, and uh, all balsa. You know, what really old my bills? I was probably about 12. Uh, you know, I couldn't have done too bad a job of it. Anyway, I went, took a plane, all proud, what have you, and a little two channel, 27 megahertz um, radio set, all, all wired in and what have you, and rods. Not rods, was it rods? Yeah, rods. Um, top rate, right, the, just had rudder and elevator control, so like the bit on the fin, and the um, elevator, which is a the horizontal up and down basically on the t on the tail as well. So just two controls. That's all I had. Anyway, I went went down to the club with this thing. All you know, kit up. Even made it a little uh, 
well, I racked to sit in while I was so, so I could carry it down on my own to the rider club. It was just literally around the corner, we just, we just walked there. And uh, a guy called Mike, Mike Green I think his name was, I remember right, it was a long, long, long time ago, so I was only a kid then. I'm now an old git. Anyway, he'd um, got me sorted out and he put it on this, we used a, bun, a thing called a bungee. So it's like 25 metres of surgical elastic, literally, like a, like a tubular last, elastic. Then it had like 100, 100 pound brake and strain, fishing line effectively, at, um, attached to that, and a little parachute on the end of it, and a, and a ring. And basically you pulled it back and pulled it back, against the wind, yeah, and let go, and then it was basically fly up, you know, pull it against the wind, like a kite, think of a kite. Um, you used to think of tow lines years ago as well, but this, anyway, this has a, what we call a bungee, like a big catapult. And so literally gradually uh, pulling it against the wind, into, up and up and up it went. Mike was, uh, had, you know, had the controls, because that, that's the most dangerous part, is actually the first launch, obviously. When you, you know, and plus, they didn't know if the plane was going to fly. Um, they did chuck it a few times to see if it, you know, if it was balanced well, and it was. Anyway, they were confident enough to put it up there. And my first flight... Remember it's a glider, quite often in a glider you go up and you've go back down again, you know? And that first flight it was up there for nearly an hour. Basically they brought it down because they didn't know if the battery was going to be last long enough for the, for the receiver, for the radio. So I built the thing and I was hooked, that was it, I was it, I was, I was just hooked. I was just, oh, you know. And I got to fly the thing as well while it was up, he went to see all the flying. He was basically trying to teach me to fly. I hadn't flown before, obviously, I was only a kid. And, um... Anyway, so there I was. Happy to put a sandpiper with this uh, aeroplane that I built. Um, and it was covered in, it, it wasn't tissue or anything like that. So we used stuff called solar film. So basically, it's, you put on with an iron, really. You know, I used mum's, <laughs> mum's iron to do all the solar filming and, uh, and a, and a uh, hairdryer. And uh, these are the bottoms of mum's sol- um, iron after that was in a bit of a state. You, you, know, you get a bit stick to the iron, you see. Little bits of plas- this plasticky stuff. Anyway, you put it on and you, sh- you sh- heat up and you shrink it, and it stretches over the wings. Solar film. I think I think the actual company you now has gone has gone bust. Still buy the stuff. There's other, there's other makes. Um, and I'm actually built. Well, I started building an airplane. I ain't finished up because I got a bit sidetracked with work and what have you. And I started building an airplane called an Electrofly, which is an old kit. Um, but I've, you know, anyway, that's another story. For another day, maybe. But anyway, this puffin, this, this model airplane that I built, I had that for years. But even even when I met Caroline, I, I still had that plane. You know, it's yeah, you know, things you're sort of proud of because it, it flew so blooming well. It looked really ugly, but flew brilliantly. So obviously, I must have got the wings right when I built them. It must be fairly true. Luckily, my dad did. You know, he kept an eye on them because he used to build airplanes as well. He's built quite a few. I've actually got had enough glue. I just want to make sure I fill the gaps up with it though. So it's quite cool really. But um I just love making things. I always have. I've, and actually I sort of digress from the main story. The main story was is that I struggled at school a little bit with friends and that as well really. I had friends, don't be wrong, I wasn't like um I wasn't that ostracised. But because everyone was into football, yeah, and they got to know that I, I, I wasn't interested in football because I showed no interest. Um, you kind of got left out with certain things, don't you know, regarding football. Which I was kind of glad, really, because even to this day, I'm not, I'm not interested in football at all. Not at all. I understand people, why people are, I don't mean. Don't worry, I do like sports and stuff like that, certain sports, but I don't follow it. I'm obviously busy, to be honest, I'm always on the go. I've always got stuff to know what I do. I just love making things. This looks so cool. I'm actually really pleased how this turned out, to be honest, considering it's made it a rough old bit of pine. And we will need to do some TLC, obviously. But if you look at that, it's sort of like... Hello, Jeremy, how you doing, buddy? I've made a wing! <laughs> Using um, a method called intarsia. So it's like, uh, got text, you know what I mean? Each of the bits are individual. I'm just gluing it all back in. You start with the main cut, like that. So I've marked the other wing out on here. On here ready for the next one, but I've glued it all together now, so I've got, we've now got to wait for that to uh, to dry, so yeah. Anyway, I've always sort of flown on aeroplanes, and I still do, 
bit of a kid really, I know. I'm not into scale or anything like that, scale models, but anything that flies and flies well. Whether it be powered or anything like that. There's a club here actually, it's, um, it's a private club. Oh, just remembered. I've got that random bit that broke off, haven't I? I've got to make sure I can do that one. I'm just going to go on there. Um, a guy called Vin Vansol. Vincent, basically. Um, he's uh, got his own little airstrip for model airplanes. And he's, got, he's, he's allowed to fly because they're quite strict here, very strict in fact. You can't just go to your local um, park and fly. You have to, it has to be a designated place. It comes with aviation. Um, basically, the, you, your licence is from the uh, French Aviation Authority. So, yeah, they're really, really strict. Understandably so, really. Because some of these aircraft are quite, not be funny, are, are quite formidable things. Like um, Vanso's dad, I can't remember his name now. Um, anyway, he just built a aeroplane, an old vintage World War One uh, plane. I can't remember what, what it is. A German plane. Anyway, it's absolutely gorgeous. This thing is, and it's all canvas and fra proper framed in that. It's really beautifully made. You know, highly skilled bloke. It's his field. You know, it's his airstrip, and um, it's got a wingspan of 14 feet. In old money, was that new money these days? It's huge, and it's got a Genoa engine. It's an actual proper. It's not a glow engine. It's like a, think of like a, a streamer engine or something like that. Do you know what I mean? But quite, quite big, big old wooden prop. It's a lovely thing. Watching that thing fly, it was. It's just that kind of stuff about it. It's just um, inspiring. Look at the boy. There you go. It's quite nice actually that club because there's, there's a lot of youngsters there as well. We sort of introduce young people into the hobby. Yeah, with, with proper aeroplanes, not just helicopters and like me and my drones. Just something nice about it. I like it. Well, I hadn't seen them for a while, COVID and that, you know. And I've been busy. Oh, that's not a good idea. Let's do that way first. I wasn't going to clamp it, but if I can get a couple of clamps on there, it'll just be a lot, lot stronger if we can. So that I'll get from there to there. Not going to be too tight. There you go. And then maybe I could then do there to there. Whoa, oh, no, not that. <laughs> there to there, maybe. So I'm not doing really tight, so it's at risk of keep popping up, you know, the, the clamps keep popping off. There you go, that one's there, just gently do it. Is it possible to get that one in? I could do with it because it keeps trying to pop, pull out, you see. So I could do with a clamp there. Is it possible to get another clamp on there? And where are, there should be four of those clamps. I bet Caroline's been putting them in here because they look like the other ones. No, no, she hasn't. Blame Caroline, poor girl. It wasn't her. <laughs> what I need to do is have a real proper clear up in there and actually make sure everything, yeah, find everything and put everything back where it belongs. Some of it's me actually, it's just me being lazy, not putting things back properly. Some of it's Caroline because she comes in, if she helps and what have you, which is great. But she doesn't, obviously, she doesn't necessarily know where everything is. Or, go, or where it's supposed to go. Is that, oh, that will work. That'll go on there. Ah. Caroline, she's a sweet girl, though. It's her birthday this week. She's 60. We can't even really go anywhere because of them COVID. So, we were hoping to go in the camper, but we can't really do that. For one thing, the camper needs a CT. It failed as women's CT. So I've got to do that. Well, that's going on to there, and now we want on on there. So, I had the same thing on my 50th, so. Yeah, and a half ago. So we didn't do anything for that either. So we made that reach there, will that reach? Right there again. We're, well, so we're reasonably healthy. And we have to ask ourselves, you know, some poor buggers are lost family members, aren't they? So, 
It's not really a big deal. There's hard little problems or nothing really are in comparison to that. There you go. Use my fingers, oh dear. I thought Max was going to be going to sand it and blow torch it. Wow. <laughs> right, okay, so now we have our first wing. And now we know how we're going to do it, well then, quite frankly, the next one should be a lot, lot easier. Just make sure. I just don't want the glue to be bulbous, because that would look stupid. Like squeezing out, do you know what I mean? Oh, okay, well, I might have to get that. Put some weight on here as well, because it's trying to pop. Someone's asking about this weight the other day. Why well, you got weight there? <laughs> it does a job. There. You turn on that one there. And get it on. Double check everything is together. What happens when you squeeze things up like that? It's trying to pull up against the clamps. That's, I think that's it. That's good. I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'm looking at the camera now. I think, what on earth is going on there? Right. <laughs> Let's see what's going on there. Oh, don't forget to click like, will you? It'd be most kind if you do. What, doomed on the 19th? What's happening on the 19th? Oh, I missed something. Oh! I tell you, Seven, you can have a bit of fun with there. If you're into torture, I tell you, I've got some lovely clamps up there. Oh, look at that big got green, there's a big green one up there. I tell you, so you can do some damage with that thing. And uh, those two above the actual pillar drill there, those two there, you can do some damage with them as well, I'll tell you. You squeeze the living daylights out of you. Oh, blame me. Oh, yeah. Castrations on the menu. Ooh. No, don't do it. No, don't do it, no. Oh, let's talk about 5G. But regarding Huawei, I bet the only reason dumb, reason dumb refused to allow Huawei to set up 5G was because Huawei does not have a back door for the NASA, or for the NSA, sorry. Not because any fair Chinese back door. Who knows, to be honest. I think it was all about, you know, element of risk. Well, my well, voice phones are wary. It's actually really good. Wary. And so is our router, actually. That's it. We're done for. <laughs> my 4G router that does our internet, which we're now streaming through, um, that is actually uh, wary as well. It's not fair. Anti-vaxxers have jobs. Good point. We've got to sit my... Um, my daughter-in-law, she works in the library here in France, and she's... Um, Got problems with people coming in, anti-vaxxers wanting to come in and use the library, and the rules are changing soon. I think on the 16th, the rules are changing, so it's a uh, yeah. Anti-vax co worker my mum had the jabs. Oh, oh, yeah, this just makes things difficult, doesn't it? And when you get into you can't even talk about it because then they just go off on one, and it's just like it's just no ration, it's not ration, it's just not rational. So, I've got, I've, got, I've got half a little tiny baby bear here, just a little cheapy one. Needle. Get low on beers now, see? Because I'm not going to be allowed them soon. I have to be coffees. Uh, don't make off. Your tongue must hurt from bite. What? 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 Oh, bite your lip. Bite your tongue. Uh, I told the famous vaxxer predicted all the vaccinated people would just die on the January the 5th. We've got a similar problem here. Our friend um, lived down the road here. She seems to think that everyone who's in hospital are vaccinated, whereas where, where it's the other way around. It's just, you can't, but you can't, you just can't get into it. They don't believe you. They're just like, you try and explain, you try and, you yeah, know, correct them. It's just no point. <laughs> just no bollocks. Just call it politics. Uh, bumped into an anti-vaxxer tonight. And what a brat. <laughs> On the boat. Oh, God, really? Bill Gates? Oh... You either love the bloke or you hate him, but a lot of our dealings with Bill Gates in the past, when we used to do charity work for the, um, the RSPCA in the UK, on Barrack Street in, uh, in Norwich, and um, we used to apply quite regular to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and 
they give a lot of money. They do. They've got the hell of a lot of money they give. And they've been doing it for a very long time. It isn't just all of a sudden going to start doing it. They've been doing it for decades. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, if you're interested. Get yourself a new car or something. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Gates, uh, I need a new car. I can't get to work. He's given a lot of money towards um, research regarding the vaccines as well, so he can then put more into the into the, these microchips into the, into the jabs, apparently, can't he? No? But he has given a lot of money to about 100 million or something. So I think it's more than that now. Anvil? Yes, I like Anvil. Almost looks like an anvil. What looks like an anvil? An anvil? What looks like an anvil? I'm confused now. Mike from Storm. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it is difficult, and Jeremy, you know, when you get come across these people, I find it hard. I can't say nothing, you just get into a pointless argument. Absolutely pointless. Just learn to do what you want. And me and Carol got to the feeling now that we just, you know, that they're the ones that are really at risk. Unfortunately, they like to spread it as well, though. So in Florida, anti-vaxxers are getting unemployment. Really? If they lose their jobs because they aren't vaxxed. Are getting unemployment. Because, um... Oh, I can't remember who it is now. One, one of the companies here... Um, have basically said they won't give... Not here, sorry, in the UK. They're not giving unemployment... Uh, no, sickness benefit for those who haven't been vaccinated. I can't remember who it is now. Um, but I understand, you know... You still get um, your standard statutory sick pay, but not their top-up bit. Oh, Jeremy Goff goes, check out Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings vintage plane collection. Really? Oh. I will do that. Cheers, boy. Yeah, thanks for that, Jeremy. Excellent. I do like the old planes. They're fantastic. I've been in a Tiger Moth before, years ago. God, that's a bumpy ride. So put your credit card into your glove, then place your hand on a payment sheet and see the vaccination worked. What? Oh. <laughs> that's a bit odd. A fret saw machine. Well, a fret saw machine is like a skull saw. Ah, oh, the fret saw machine, look at that, it's a big lump of iron, I'll tell you, that thing's heavy. That is heavy. Solid as a rock, I think. It's a bit of kind of, um, built like a tractor, really. It's, 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 there's no finesse about it, but it is, uh, it, it runs really smoothly. See, you've got a problem with some of the, um, scroll saws, especially some of the cheaper ones. If you start putting, like, uh, um, pinless blades in them, they, they vibrate a lot. Oh, really? Oh, is that right, Kit Kat, about Nadal and Fedra? Crikey. Oh, yes, OK, that's it, you're right. They, they give a top-up, don't they? Um, they, they? Generally, they give a top-up. They, they're, quite, they're quite good like that, but not with the young, not vaccinated now, they've said. They just raise their voice and try to talk you out. Yeah, they do. You're right, Peter. It's a bit like Brexit. It's exactly what happened to that. Project Fair and all that, yeah, right. More like reality. Uh, 10,000 protested on the streets at Rostock last night, vaccinated and unvaccinated together. Oh, I've got it. Everyone seems to have had enough. Well, people do. We'll have enough, wouldn't they? But, to be honest, when you vaccinate, you need to get vaccinated. Because maybe that's the only way we can get out of this. I've said this before, actually, and I just feel that um, where would we be if we didn't have that vaccine? We'd be in a whole lot of hurt. I know somebody, oh, yeah, herd immunity and all that. Yeah, right. How many people got to die, die before you get anywhere near herd immunity? And it's not, not like, if you think like vaccines, like for instance, like um, tetanus, when I first had tetanus, tetanus jabs with a kid, it was every five years. Boom. And then it jumped to um, 10 years, and then it jumped again to like 25 years every time you need a tetanus vaccine, because it's, it's, I think it's because it's a, a live vaccine. It's 10 or 12. It's a live vaccine. So it um, stays in your system. But the thing with herd immunity, we're, t we're talking about 
um, T cells and stuff, aren't you? And effectively, it, it, it causes volume in your blood. But as your body makes more blood, it replaces those T, the T cells disappear after a period of time. So that's why the herd immunity wears off. So it's not exactly um, a good idea, is it? In fact, you know, and that's why we have to keep have been revaccinated. We're all you talking about up here in France. Um, they're now going to be, they've already announced they'll be given the full vaccine. So I've had my third. God, I felt rough after that. Friggy. My asthma really played up. I set that off. I've been working, I've been, uh, but mad. Which, well, I thought it was asthma. That was a vaccine in the end because I'm okay now. Still a bit wheezy, but nothing like I was. And it's just crazy. It's crazy. Anyway, we did it. You know, Carol had hers as well. It just makes you feel a bit safer. And also, it makes you feel that you're less likely to spread it. Because obviously, if you're not harboring or festering inside your body, you're, you're going to have less um, viral, body, yeah, viral cells to spread about and spit on people. You know, I'll tell you what, though. It really gets me. When you people... St- you know, we know a couple of people who, who, who spit a lot when they talk. Everyone spits a little bit. But, I mean, it's, you sit, the light is shining on it. It's like globules coming out everywhere. And you you're not going to die even all this COVID. Get, get, get away from me, I don't want your COVID. If they got COVID. So it's just like, you know, it's just madness. And it's, they don't understand or they don't see that there's a problem. You know, sometimes they're anti vaxxers. And what I know in particular is. So it's kind of the, oh, painful. Anyway, that's kind of politicky type of health shops. Anyway, anyway, I digressed. I suppose I better go and see my dear wife because it's like three hours again. Oh my god, I'm gonna get in trouble. I will. Should we leave me nasty messages on here? No, oh, phew. Before COVID, TB and measles were on the rise because people, yeah, were taking the vaccine because less people were taking the vaccine. Yes, oh, that's very true. Rick Rude, I don't know who's Rick Rude. I don't know Rick Rude. Uh, Jimmy Ray Reese, old Jim Reeves. Well, I've gone the wrong way. <laughs> there was a story a while back of people publicly declaring an anti uh, VW and then going into disguise to get the jab. Really? God, really? Oh, that's nuts. The whole thing is just sad and angering. No, you're right. You're very, that's very true to it. Um, Kit Kat says, by the way, anyone interested in what's going on in Australia about Jimmy Rees for some good giggles? You might not understand that the hilarity of the latest group of chat vid before watching previous ones. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's just got mad, isn't it? You could, you know, I looked recently. I did earlier today, but not recently. But he's um. I just think he's. I, I'm sorry, but I just think he's just wrong. All this kind of I'm better than everybody else. I'm a tennis player. My, I'm, I'm entitled because I'm great, I'm special. My, uh, DeWitt says, my elder brother was born before most of the vaccines we have today. Oh my God, really? As I told you, become infected with uh, three on the top of each other. But down... Oh really? Cut his life short. Well, that's the thing, that's the thing people don't realise, do they? It's not just long COVID, it's just... You know, it's organ damage. Cause the organ damage. It's like when my dear wife she had when she had septus, she's got basically got organ damage. You know, um you know, it's 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 worrying. Crikey, my grandparents lost five children because they had um no access to vaccine. Yeah, I think it's Caroline's um oh would have been her auntie died from T B. Aren't you or would have been an uncle. I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, it's just nuts. I was a bit worried about the vaccine at, at the start, but once you get to, you know, know you realise it's not like really a live vaccine. Like that, is it? It's um, it's tricking the body to create the antibodies. You know, once you realise that, you think, well, why was the worry? Probably does make you feel a bit grotty. You know, just um, you know. You, it does feel a little bit like everyone who's getting vaccinated is, is really allowing those not to get vaccinated because we're protecting them. Oh, TB. Oh, okay. 
Well, I mean, that's re that was really common then. That's those people died of TB, didn't they? Oh, they, apparently they did not protest together. I, I can't comment that because I don't really know. Um, but anyway, I'm going to call it it. So I'm going to thank everybody. I'll thank Jasper, Kit Kat, Mo Green, do it. Oh, that's all we've got here. Do, 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 do. Obviously, uh, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Peter. Peterless. Do, do, do. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. And Tommy. Tommy Gun. And Jeff. Oh, that's just true. Do, do, do. Ginger's Drafts. I still got a response here. Oh, God, I nearly forgot. Thanks for that. You just reminded me. Garden the Etsy. I'm going to try and keep that off again. Do, 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 do. Oh, la, 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 la. I'm scrolling, I am. I'm scrolling. See if I don't miss anybody. Don't think, oh, have I got these? That's, oh, no, that's different. That's not, that's some, oh, I've done that one. Done that one. Done that one. Do, 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 do. Still scroll. That's me. Thank you, me. <laughs> oh, dear. Da, da, da. I think I've got everybody. Got well, quite a few comments. That's pretty cool. Yeah, there's chats. And Duke. Duke Vengeance. You barely fell asleep. Did you fall asleep, Duke? That was a while ago, that was, though. La 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 la. That's cool. I think I've got everybody. Anyway, I'm going to call it it because I think I really ought to see my missus. And I'm getting cold because the fire's gone out. <laughs> you, you enjoy the rest of your evening. And let's all throw stones at the anti vaxxers. <laughs> it's woodworking. Throw lumps of wood. Two by fours. Yeah. yeah enjoy your evening, everybody. And thank you very much. Don't forget to click like. Really helps the channel. And obviously check out my other videos as well I've been doing. So I've got another one to edit for this channel. So anyway, ta-ta. <laughs> Thank you.